Who do we got in the chat? Nope, not today. We got Rachel, Petty, Mason, Deb. I'm so glad I could see the mods. This is so awesome. Kelly Kurzog. What is up, guys? Hey, Gaming and Sleuthing. How are you? I still have to get back with you on stuff. Dude, I've been so busy. I'm going to try to get caught up this week, but I don't I don't think I'll be able to because I still have to finish the, <laughs> the jail calls. I'm going to be getting this new thing in with this case that I have to do. Um, <clears throat> I've been digging. Okay, so I went to Columbus this weekend and then... I got home yesterday and I just been digging into this Shonda family stuff. I wanted to get it all straightened out. So I found some things. I still didn't find everything I wanted to find, but I did find more stuff. I did there. I did find the real Kenneth Trammell, which is not the Kenneth Lee Trammell. It's Kenneth E. Trammell. So I found her, her real stepdad or dad. I don't know. It's very confusing. I'm not sure how that all works. The Ramsey guy is a freaking mystery, but I'd made a little PowerPoint, guys. I try to be somewhat organized. I got so much crap for that live the other day. It's like, you know, either I waited a whole week. I guess I should have just waited to give the information, but I wasn't either I did it then or I had to wait to do it. And I don't know. People were just really coming at me for, about that. Um... But I try to be, I'm, I, I try to kind of have it organized here. I did, a, oh my God, I'm recording. Hold on. Oh, Wolfpack, that's to you. I had your thing up and it's recording my audio. Hold on a second. You guys ever do that? This happens a lot where it starts recording me. Um. Anyway, hey Patronus. I made a little um. PowerPoint. <laughs> so, uh, I know, me too. You know what? Screw it. I just, I do... Uh, I don't want to lose people though, you know, because it was it was good information. Like it was really good information. So it just sucks that people are like, you know, it was, it, even some people are like it's really good information. But but I hated the people that are like, we don't care about you. We don't. We just want the information. That almost feels like people are just using me. <laughs> but I guess I mean the information. Some people just want the information. But it almost feels like gross. Like it feels they're like we're not here for you. We're here for the information. It's like I don't know. It just feels like so not how i built the channel i built it more personal and like wanted to get to know you guys but oh well i guess that's why i do do the pre-records and don't barely i'm not barely in them because it's for those people that only want the facts and they don't like me but oh well um anyway yeah so i did do a little powerpoint um it's still probably not up to par of what some people want but I figured it would kind of help. I did like a family tree and stuff and kind of, it would kind of help keep everything in, 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 um, in order a little bit. And then I still have to fill in a few missing pieces, but I, I found a lot of crap, dude. I feel like, like, I feel like, I don't know. I feel all proud, but <laughs> it's like me. And I think I'm, and just like when I find out a new person, cause I finally found, uh, I haven't found Paige yet, but I finally, I finally found Shonda's other sister, Helen. I finally found her I and I couldn't the way like and I it's just like such a good feeling when you think it's her and then it connects to people you're like wait and it connected to David they had the same address they they were friends and it just was connecting and I'm like this really is her and then when I did the background search I had a picture of her so it all connected so I did find one of her sisters I still have to find Paige so I am still gonna work on it I don't I'm not gonna give up till I find Paige and and her real dad those are the two I cannot find yet but okay, so let's go. Let's get into this. Um, do we get slide handouts? <laughs> oh, good. I, don't, I don't know. I never. I, I actually never used power. This is the first time I used PowerPoint. To be honest, it's not. I mean, it's pretty easy, self-explanatory. But I just wanted to. I'm not sure. Sh you think it's better if I actually? Here, I'll show you. Hold on. It's not that. I don't. I only have like probably ten. I have fifteen slides. That's all. It's not really a ton. And then I have extra stuff I want to go over. Oh, and I found out who Randy is. We got Randy. We all. I have so much stuff. I feel like it's so much stuff. But we got Randy. We figured out. Like I, I'm talking. When I'm saying we, I mean me, us. Like you guys. We got it. I'll show you. So it's us together. We found out. Yeah, Randy. I found. Actually, somebody, um, who sent me that? Um, somebody emailed me. So actually I should give them a shout out. Who are you here? The one that helped me find out who Randy is. Cause somebody just sent me this article that explains who Randy is. Uh, so I guess I, I can't take credit for that. Somebody emailed me that. Um, hold on. 
Who was that? Do, do. All right, so let's just do this here. I wanted to give them a... I don't know. Oh, they did a PayPal. That's right. Shoot. All right. Well, when we get to that part, I'll give them a shout out. Um. All right, so let's do this. Let's just start with the family stuff, and then we'll get into the... Just remind me to do the Randy thing. It's just like a quick article, but... All right. Hold on, let me start this. Start from the beginning. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, Shonda. So, Shonda, this will be Shonda's family. All right. There we go. Oh, wait. How does that? Oh, okay. Oh, cool. All right. Just bear with me here. I don't know why it did it when it showed those and then it, I don't know. But anyway. I'm just going to bring them all up now. All right. Oh, wait, there's one more. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we have, just want to set it up just so you can get a good eye of everything as we go through it. Hopefully you'll be able to see. So we have, um, this would be, these two up here are Shonda's great, great grandparents. And then we have her great grandparents. <laughs> and then this is her grandma. So Joan is her grandma right here. Okay. So Joan only had one kid, and I still can't find who she had Mildred with, because who's this Van Zell, okay? Because her maiden name's Warner. Who's this Van Zell? You know what I'm saying? So Van Zell must be the one that is uh, the dad, whoever. I can't find, uh, I can't find basically Shonda's grandpa, whoever Shonda's grandma's Joan. The grandpa, they had Mildred, okay? Mildred married Kenneth. I can't find the other person Mildred married. Ramsey, wherever. All these kids are getting Ramsey. Because sometimes, the, like, even sometimes, um, they all sometimes use the, the last name Ramsey. That's all one of their options. So I don't know who this Ramsey is, but I did find the real Kenneth E. Trammell. He is their stepdad, I'm, I think. I don't know if he's all of their stepdads, but in his obituary, obituary, this is they're they're all listed as his kids. So I mean, they could be if they're stepkids, and he basically raised them because, well, if Shonda's real dad died, they said when she was eight. So I don't know, but anyway, so we have David, Helen, Paige, and Shonda. Okay, um, Mildred had four kids. And then, of course, Shonda's kids, she has the four with Eric and then the one with Adam, okay? So, Shonda's great-grandparents, we have Herbert D. Warner. He has my birthday, by the way, October 11th. <laughs> um, he is, he graduated from University of Michigan School of Law, so more law students here. And then we have, so this is her great-grandparents. We have Mildred Westervelt, and this is two pictures of her. So hopefully it helps. Hopefully this does help you kind of eyeball everything. I hope, I don't know, maybe I should have stayed on the other one a little longer, but. So this is gra this is Shonda's maternal grandmother, Joan, Joan Warner Vanzell. So remember Mildred, Shonda's mother, was hiring to have her killed. She, this is the daughter of the Harris, heiress, heiress. <laughs> um, this is the, the, uh, the mother she was trying to hire to get killed is Joan. Okay, because she was worth a lot of money. So Shonda's mother hired to kill her mother, which was, this is Shonda's grandmother. But, um, so she was born January 1st, 1926, moved to Tuscaloosa in 1929, attended University of Alabama. After college, she lived in California, Florida, then returned to Tuscaloosa. She actually does have a lot of other stuff that she was involved in. I didn't, I didn't put it all on there, but she was, did a lot of crap. She just, she, this family is very like into a lot of stuff and they were very important. There was a lot of successes and then there was a lot of trauma that happened too, it seems like. But yeah, this is, so this is Shonda's grandma, her maternal grandma. Oh, shoot. This this is Shonda's great uncle. He and I just wanted to point this out because it's kind of interesting what happened to him. Okay, so I'm going to read you this what happened to her great uncle. So this is um his name is Herbert David J Warner Jr. So David Warner killed. Funeral will be here. This is the first serious accident in 21 years at Camp Eberhard, Indiana. Friday claimed the life of David Warner, 16-year-old son of Mr. and Mrs. Herbert D. Warner 
of this city of the city. David, who was to have left camp today, fell from a high diving board into shallow water, breaking his neck. His mother was in the South Bend at the time, preparing to start for Tuscaloosa with her two sons, David and Jack, both of whom had attended camp during the summer. The two little Warner girls were with their mother. Miss Mr. Warner, treasurer of Gulf States Paper Corp here, was notified by long distance telephone and left at once to join his wife. Funeral services will be held at the Warner home in Pinehurst Tuesday afternoon at four o'clock. Plans for internment may have not been completed. Local arrangements are in charge of Jones and Spiegner. David, an excellent swimmer and a leader at Camp Eberhardt, where he was spending his fourth summer, is reported to have fallen off the highest of three diving boards onto a three-foot water at Lake Cory, a small lake on which the camp is located. Press reports said he was playing tag with other boys and slipped from the springboard just as he stepped off the ladder. He was the oldest son of Warner's, a junior in Tuscaloosa High School, and an outstanding Boy Scout in Troop S. He moved to Tuscaloosa several years ago at midterm, but despite his, this handicap, he was graduated from junior high in 1930 with uh, high scholastic honors. Despite the comparatively brief time he had spent in this city, the youth was widely known among both the young people and many of the older residents among whom he was outstanding for his manliness, his, his manliness, his thoughtful, courteous, his striking character, and his high, his high scholarship. Oh, thank you, our ASMRtist, AMSRistic. You do AMSR, ASMR. I love that stuff. Oh, thank you for joining, Jennifer. Thank you. And then thank you for the super chat. You guys are awesome. Um, okay, so it says news of the fatal accident brought many expressions of grief and bereavement here Saturday. Many messages of sympathy were telegraphed to Mr. and Mrs. Warner by their friends and associates here. Uh, W.P. Thielen's brother-in-law of Mr. Warner, David Scoutmaster, and an official at the paper mill accompanied the great stricken Par parent on the trip up to South Bend. So yeah, that's her great uncle. And then we have, here's Shonda's parents. Well, her biological dad, I don't know. I, the Ramsey, where they're getting the Ramsey name, I have no idea. I cannot find the guy, but this guy was a big part of their life for, I mean, enough where a lot of them uh, are using his name. Um, so this is one of the pictures I found of her mom when she, this is her, a, one, a high school picture. Oh, this is his high school. These are both high, from high school pictures. Um, I couldn't find any recent ones of Kenneth, but, um, so yeah. So Chandra's, uh, oh wait. Chandra's uh parents so her mom was born born july 1949 her father or stepfather born june 25th 1942 in aniston calhoun county alabama he died december 7th 2005 age 63 at ohachi calhoun county alabama he was the u.s air force veteran or he was a u.s air force veteran and retired as an accountant um and so Margaret, I cannot, or Mildred, I can't find the her death date. I cannot find the day that she died. So that's why I didn't include it. I can't, I couldn't find it, but um, I'm assuming she, oh, I know she died because her, Shonda's, Shonda's sister uh, talks about how, yeah, she died. So I know she did die, but I just can't find the date. But anyway, all right. So yeah, this is the, this is the real Kenneth Etringham also. That other one was not him, guys. Okay, and here is Kenneth E. Trammell's uh, obituary. Okay, it says, Mr. Kenneth E. Trammell, 63, of Ohachi, passed away Wednesday at his residence. Survivors include his three daughters, Shonda Ferguson of North Carolina, Paige Amber Colby of Huntsville, and Helen Bell Trammell of Huntsville. His son, David Warner of Huntsville, his stepmother, Pauline Trammell, 
of Illinois, his sister Susie Cunningham of Huntsville, and seven grandchildren. Mr. Trammell was a native and lifelong resident of Calhoun County and a graduate of Anniston High School. He was a Air, U.S. Air Force veteran and retired as an accountant. Mr. Trammell will be greatly missed by his family. Gray Brown service in charge of arrangements, blah, blah. So, yeah, this, you could see, oh, I have these um in my pictures, but I could zoom in because this is a, on the PowerPoint, but you'll be able to, it says Shonda right here, so. I didn't realize. Oh, you know what? I was going to put, hold on a second. Give me one minute. I was going to make it so it's a little bit bigger. Hold on, guys. I was going to put it on the other uh, setting. Just hold your, just to, if I put myself up there. And then. So this should be a little bit bigger at least, but we'll go through it. But right here is where it says John. Oh yeah, you could still read it there. Yeah, okay. And then this is another um, obituary from the newspaper. Mr. Kenneth E. Trammell, 63, of Ohachi, passed away Wednesday at his residence. Survivors include his three daughters, Shonda Ferguson of North Carolina. Um, oh, now my face is in the way. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Hold on, guys. What if I just go like this? See, I try to be all good and it just... I'm going to go back to where I was. I'll just have to do it the way I, I had it. Sorry, guys. I just thought it would... I, but I, you could see it good enough, and we could go back to... Okay. So, yeah. So, here, right here, Shonda Ferguson of North Carolina, Paige uh, Amber Colby of Huntsville, Helen Beltramo of Huntsville, his son David Warner of Huntsville, his mother, stepmother Pauline Trammell, blah, blah, blah. Same, basically same stuff, okay? Um, and then we have some more of the father. So, here's a couple more high school pictures of her stepfather, Kenneth. Um, this is a art news article I found of him. It says Huntsville Cadet is chairman for CAP Council. Cadet Roth, commander of the Huntsville Cadet Squadron of the Civil Air Patrol, has named has been named chairman of the Cadet Advisory Council for the Alabama Wing. Roth, who resides in Lowell Drive, has been active in Civil Air Patrol activities for several years. Kenneth Trammell of Aniston. Um, was chosen as co-chairman and Don R. Delano of the Muscle Shoals Squadron was named reorder and other appointment. And then we have Robert Roberts chooses eight Alabamians for academics. Republican Kenneth Roberts de Alla Saturday announced his choice of eight Alabamians as candidates for West Point Military Academy the Naval Academy at Annapolis, and the Air Force Academy in Colorado. Receiving principal, man, these are, why is this so hard to read? Hold on, guys, just let me take my sip of coffee real quick. I'm not doing a very good job reading, I know. Some days I do better. Okay. Okay, receiving principal appointments to the Naval Academy are Stephen Russell Woodle, Springville, Roy T. Flanagan, Jr. of Anniston, and Michael D. Langston of Tallahassee. Principal appointees to West Point are John Tillman, Madsen, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, he's that's the one Kenneth is in. He's a principal appointee to West Point, and Kenneth is one of them. So her stepdad is one of them. And then there here is his uh, headstone or whatever. Okay. Now, this is Shonda's sister, Helen, right here. And there's uh, he Helen and her father slash stepfather, Kenneth, got in an actual, they got in a plane crash. Interesting. So here is a couple articles about that. So it says, man, daughter hurt when plane crashes. A Huntsville man and his seven-year-old daughter were injured Saturday night when their single-engine Cessna crashed just south of here in Morgan County. Morgan County Chief Deputy Paul Kane says Kenneth Trammell, 34, and his seven-year-old daughter, Helen, 
were transported to Huntsville Hospital, where they were listed in, the, in stable condition. Kane said their injuries did not appear to be serious. The deputy said that Trammels landed at the Lacey Springs Airport and had just taken off when the accident occurred. And here's another uh, thing. It says a Huntsville man and his daughter escaped serious injury when their Cessna 150 airplane crashed just northeast of the South Huntsville Airport about 7.25 p.m. Saturday. Morgan County Deputy Paul Kane said Kenneth Trammell, um, accompanied by his daughter Helen Seven, was flying the aircraft back to the airport when the plane stalled and fell to the ground. Trammell and his daughter were being treated for injuries at Medical Center for Hospital medical center hospital the airplane barely missed power lines and a power pool when it hit about one half mile from the airport in vine covered ditch witnesses said trammell crawled free of the plane to the edge of the road and called for help residents nearby notified state troopers of the crash and carried the girl from the plane to the roadway the plane did not catch fire trammell been had taken had been taken had been making touch and go landings when the flaps locked in the down position Kane said I don't know, Melissa. I don't think she's in speaking terms with either of her sisters. No, I don't. I don't think she even talks. I think Dave is the only one she talks to. But she had, I mean, she had an important, like her family, she came from, here's the thing. She came from people that didn't, okay, people that did live up to their potential. And then when it hit Shonda's family, it's like they had like a, they had potential, but they just didn't live up to. I mean, she came from like, they're, some good family i get well i guess on the outside it looked good i mean they they had that company that they all ran they were her grandparents or at least were in some all kinds of crap i could read you like a long list if you want to see they were very important people um and then we have even kenneth i mean we know what goes by what goes on behind closed doors you know just because he looked low he was a veteran and he looked like an maybe a okay guy you know if he was indeed doing that to his having relations with his daughters like that then that's not okay uh but anyway yeah and then here is the um the stuff that we read before was i'm probably i don't need to probably read this again right I, did most people see did most people read when i read it before this is shonda's mom right here it says would be heiress gets prison term and murder for hire a bankrupt Huntsville woman who stands to become heiress to part of the Gulf State's paper corp for fortune has been sentenced to two and a half years in prison and fined $250,000 for scheming to have her wealthy mother murdered. In sentencing 38-year-old Mildred Trammell, U.S. District Judge James Hancock ruled that the $250,000 fine is payable when and if Mrs. Trammell receives the inheritance she was convicted of planning to obtain through murder. Mrs. Trammell was ordered to report to prison May 20th. Bill Burgess, Mrs. Trammell's court-appointed attorney and Huntsville neighbor, said he may appeal her conviction. A federal jury in Huntsville found Mrs. Trammell guilty April 13th on four counts of using an interstate communications device, a telephone, to plot her mother's murder last fall. Her mother... Gulf State stockholder Joan Van Zell of Ponte Verde, Florida, is the sister of Gulf State's board cha chairman Jack Warner of Tusca Tuscaloosa. Mrs. Van Zell was never harmed and no money ever changed hands in the scheme. But according to trial testimony, Mrs. Trammell offered one of her former employees at a Huntsville daycare center $25,000 share of her $2.9 million trust she stood to inherit if she would help arrange the killing. The government intended that Mrs. Trammell hoped ultimately to gain control of a $30 million family fortune. The former employee, Cindy Orgulis, testified that when she telephoned Mrs. Trammell from Washington State last year, Mrs. Trammell offered to fund a syndicate hit on her mother and even suggested that it could be done in a way to implicate her ex-husband, Ken Trammell. <laughs> wow. So she wanted to basically frame Ken. What? She's something else. I mean, we, sh that, this is where freaking Shonda gets it. Mrs. Orgulis told authorities about the conversation and agreed to cooperate. Mrs. Orgulis told authorities about the conversations and agreed to cooperate in investigating the case. Her statements led to Mrs. Trammell's arrest January 8th. Three tape recordings of rambling telephone conversations between the women were played for jurors during the three-day trial. 
On one recording, when asked if she really wanted her mother killed, Mrs. Trammell replied, No remorse. Nope. I'm cool and calm as a cucumber. Jury foreman Warren White said after the trial that the tape recordings were crucial in the decision to convict Mrs. Trammell. Hancock's sentence fell short of the four-year prison term called, called for in the case under new federal sentencing guidelines. Hancock explained that he could he took into consideration evidence of alleged coercion by Mrs. Orgulis and evidence that Mrs. Trimble might have been in a state of intoxication at the times of the plot was discussed. Also, Hancock noted that the plan never came close to fruition. You took no overt action to follow up or implement the plan that was discussed through the interstate communication facilities, Hancock said. Mrs. Trammell alternately sat and stood quietly through the sentencing, occasionally responding to Hancock's questions with a barely audible yes sir or no sir. Mrs. Trammell raised by her mother in South California, Southern California, friends said Mrs. Trammell came to Huntsville about 10 years ago when she married Ken Trammell, her second husband. The couple found the Hunts the couple founded the Huntsville School for the Gifted. After financial problems caused the Trammells to lose control of the school, they founded a daycare center where Mrs. Orgulis worked in 18, or 1985 and 1986 before moving to Washington State. Mrs. Trammell testified at her trial that she had not talked to her mother in more than 10 years. Assistant U.S. Attorney John Ott, who prosecuted the case, said Mrs. Trammell began trying to find a way to get more family money when she and her husband faced bankruptcy last year. Her marriage to Trammell ended in divorce in June of 1987. So that would have been... Dude, see, this is why I think this is actually Shonda's real dad. I think Ken Trammell's her father. Because the dates... No, they said she died. Wait, they said she, he said she died when she was eight years old. I don't know. Court records show that Mrs. Trammell lost her 250,000 mountaintop home in Huntsville to bankruptcy in early April. The years are just like, it almost seems like maybe that is why they consider. You know, because he, they were young when she was with them. So I wonder if her dad and her, so maybe her real dad and her mom weren't even together when he died. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. And then um, here's the other article and stuff. I don't have to read this. It basically says the same stuff. I read it in the last live, but... I just want to include it because it has, a, you know, another picture and it talks about. Let me, well, let me read. There's a couple. Uh, I'll read this part over here. It's a little bit, um, adds a couple new stuff that this doesn't have in it. It says, um, so now they're talking about Mrs. Trammell, right? So her attorney, so Shonda's mom. They're saying that she was a loner and perfect for manipulation. He said Mrs. Orgulis, driven by revenge for being fired from uh, from her at her job at the school, led her down the road. So basically trying to say that Shonda's mom was like manipulated into doing this, right? Berger said that the FBI, by tapping Mrs. Trammell's and Mrs. Orgulis' conversations, really wanted to reel her in. He said Mrs. Orgulis started the conversation about the alleged murder scheme. I sincerely believe this is not a criminal case, Burgess said. It is a serious abuse of Millie Trammell by Cindy Orgulis. This woman was entrapped, induced, and tricked by Cindy. Mrs. Trammell told the jury she did not remember telephone conversations with Mrs. Orgulis because I was drinking and taking a lot of pills at the time. According to transcripts, Mrs. Trammell spent a $500,000 trust fund in 10 years and was on the verge of bankruptcy. She testified that her mother had turned down her request for $500 to help in filling a bankruptcy petition. Mrs. Orgulis testified that Mrs. Trammell suggested her mother could be killed by injecting an air bubble into a blood vessel. She contacted Mrs. Van Zell, 
who alerted the FBI. So sin, the Orgulus contacted and basically told, ratted her out, you know. So here's a picture of actually her mom when she's seven. And she's hugging her grandmother. I showed it in my last slide, but I just included it. Okay, so I'll show you kind of how I linked all this together. Well, I'll go, I'll just talk about it a little bit. And then when I, when I'm done with the slides, I'll kind of show you more. But so, um, this, this is where I need your guys' opinion. Okay. So we know her other sister's name's Paige. Does this girl look too young to be her other sister? Because look, so I found out and the reason Shanded Lackey, so Helen Trammell has her own Facebook page, Helen Trammell, and then she has this, which Shanda, Shandy Lackey is the, her, her, um, it has nothing to do with her name. It's her, um, partner. So it's Helen. And then it's combined with her partner's name, Shandy Lackey or whatever. So that's why it's called that in case you're like, wait, Shandy Lackey, what that, the, whose names are those? That's her partner's name that she just kind of added on the end. Um, so anyway, I actually did a background search and got a picture of her, and that's what I used in the thumbnail. And then I was able to get more information, found her Facebook page, saw that this is just, you know, the arrest photo is a little bit younger picture. She had gained some weight and just, you know, looks older. This is her. Um, so she she posts this picture. Now, the reason I included this is because it's interesting. It says, somebody named Valerie Shea says, what happened to mom? Okay, so you would think that, is this mom or which one's mom i don't know but this says what is wrong with Paige?" so we know Paige is the other sister's name so is this Paige? i don't know so i went to valerie's to see oh wait what happened to mom is Paige her mom so i try to like look up valerie to make a connection but i can't i can't figure it out if 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 uh I don't know. I'm trying to figure that all out because I'm trying to find Paige, but we know Paige is there. Her other sister does spell her name like that too. And, but Helen responds, nothing. It is an old pick. And then, um, this girl says, I sure do miss you guys. Okay. So she is friends with David Ramsey. I showed you this. It's just a screenshot of it. So she's friends with her brother. <laughs> and then she's post this right here. And it says today is my mom's birthday even though she is in she is in heaven i still miss her here every day mom i love you and miss you now it's hard to tell of this picture because i'm like is this you know the picture that we saw of mildred does it look my, like mildred but her birthday look when she posted it july that is her birthday so i was like dude because i'm like this could either be shandy's her partner's mother or her mother but then doing some research i, I found out i don't think her partner's parents are dead they're still alive so it has to be Helen's mother and Helen's mother's birthday is in July and is saying mom's birthday. So I think this is a picture of Mil Mildred. Um, what do you guys think? The little girl looks like the grandma. The little girl looks like the grandma. I don't know, but I just want to kind of explain how I did that but yeah so this is from what i've figured out shonda's i mean from what i've been able to find this is shonda's sister helen right here okay so here is a, a really old picture of all four of the kids basically shonda's grandma joan and all her three siblings the one david that died young jack warner which he's very prominent he's got like so much stuff in his but you know his what he did in his life so these would be her great uncle two great uncles and great aunt basically and then this is joan um her grandma shonda's grandma and it does make sense the trust you remember when she took my trust on the phone call that does make sense and how uh something and it was they were talking i think they were talking about david too we're, I, we should listen to part of that phone call again now that we have some context to to go with what she's talking about because you remember she says something about how david was talking about a trust and she's like no she he's not, he not gonna get my trust or something like that 
Well, I want to listen to that now knowing this information because when I first heard it, I didn't know all this. And then here's a picture of Shonda's mom, Mildred, and Shonda's great grandma. So this would be. So it's Mildred's grandma, but it's Shonda's great grandma. But this is this is Shonda's mom and then Shonda's great grandma. You know what's scary though that her mom so we saw what Paige said that her upbringing was like and that her mom ran a daycare and that had and first of all had a school for gifted and then ran at daycare and if she was a, that abusive to her kids imagine like how she probably treated all those other kids anybody that had I want to hear from anybody that went to that daycare now they're all adults like or you know like they probably had like horrible experiences I would guess and then here is her great great grandmother this is actually joan her grandma look how much she looks like look how when she's younger how much she actually looks like uh mildred when she's younger so this is joan and helen so this is her this is basically her, shonda's grandma's right here shonda's great aunt and shonda's great great grandmother emma may nielsen wester westervelt remember so up here this is her up way up here <laughs> so it's that picture is the one at the very top emma mame nelson and then um and joan and helen these two yeah but if anybody needs like if anybody kind of wants uh once like a screenshot of this to kind of you know when you're looking it helps me i keep going back when i'm like okay which one now i'm getting pretty familiar but it's it's helped me be able to you know keep everybody straight okay okay arnold that's why you see arnold in her name here's the thing it's so weird because all of this family this whole family is really weird with like there's so many different last names that they're using that's why it was so confusing to figure it out because so not only does thank you for reminding me of arnold so mildred uses van zell trammell because she married kenneth but you're right thank you for reminding me arnold because arnold is actually in this picture right here right here Mildred Margaret Arnold Van Zell. No, who? No, I don't think. Hey, since this is a high school picture and it says Arnold, what did you wait? Let me see what you just said. Because I think Arnold must be the one Joan married then. Is that what you said? Hold on a second. Oh, I can't find that comment. Shoot. She, her name was she used arnold before she was even had kids so my what i'm saying is i think arnold is is a possibility of maybe who joan but i don't know where the van zell comes from that's what i'm saying all these last names are like for instance david ramsey sometimes you see david warner sometimes david ramsey sometimes david trammell we got Paige has like four different names. You got Colby, you have Eaton, you got Ramsey. Sometimes she, she uses Trammell. Why are they mixing these names? Like wh how many fathers have they had in their life that they have all, they want to use all these last names? Like all these stepfathers or something. Maybe their mothers were at all these men and then they all had big like chunks of importance in their life that they just, they're like, well, I could use this name because he is my stepfather. Maybe they had a few stepfathers. I don't. I don't get it. I know, of course, if they got married, that would be one. But I'm saying they they have more than two names. They're using like three, four different names. But anyway, all right. So now let me stop this. We I still have more. So I found some um, some pictures of Shonda when she's in high school too. 
I didn't include, I couldn't include everything on there. I just wanted to include like kind of the family history, but hold on one second. Let me, how do I get this off? And show. All right. So let me go to my files now. Well, you know what? If you, I could just do, I'll show you this real quick since we're talking about, so this was an excellent source of help for me too. So you could do, you know, here's Kenneth's and then it'll say family members and, you know, you could be parents, his parents, um, you know, siblings, whatever, whatever they have. So we have Mildred and then you could do children. You have Herbert, David, Warner, Jonathan, Joanne Warner. Um, so this is right here is uh, Shonda's grandma. And I just want to show you. I'll, just in case if anybody's doubting it, it does list Shauna Ferguson. Um, this one just says Shonda, but I think it says Ferguson somewhere in here. But this one says, um, she is survived by four grandchildren, David, Helen, Shonda, and Paige. Great grandchildren and her brother, Jack W. Warner, and her sister, Helen Warner, Hibbert, and their children. Grandchildren and great grandchildren. Um, so, yeah, so she... Oh, uh, preceded in death by her parents, Herbert and Mildred, and her daughter, Mildred. So her mom was, was Mildred, and she named her daughter. Her only daughter she had was Mildred. Her only daughter was Shonda's mom. Um, anyway, so look, look, she had, she was known for many benevolences. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Um. I just wanted to, I, mean, I was talking about how they're in a lot of stuff. So it says she generously supported public libraries, hospice, the Tuc Tuscaloosa Children's Hands-On Museum, Stillman College, Disabled American Veterans, and the Salvation Army. She was also involved in the formation of the Himalayan cat breed and a former president of the African Violet Society, a staunch University of Alabama supporter, a member of the Million Dollar Band, and an avid lifelong Bama fan. Her last day was highlighted by a visit from Big Al. So this is Shonda's grandma right here. Services will be at one. Um, okay, so that's her grandma. So let's go. This is this will be Shonda's great uncle. He has a lot of stuff. So he was born in Illinois, moved to Tuscaloosa. Blah blah. blah. Okay. Graduated from Culver Military Academy, attended Washington and Lee University, received degrees in business. While at Washington, he was a member of Sigma Alpha Epsilon. After college, he served in the U.S. Army. He was commissioned officer with the Mars Task Force and the Burma Theater Operations. Um, Warner's father, Herbert David Warner, was a treasurer, then chairman of the board, and finally chairman. His mother, Mildred, was served as president of Gulf States and was daughter of the company's founder, Herbert Westervelt. Jack was married to the former Elizabeth Butler, uh, vice president of Gulf States following the war. Warner headed production and sales of the company before becoming vice president. He became, he was elected president succeeding his mother. Warner became president and the chairman of the board in 1959. So they had that company, that very successful company that they passed down. I mean, there was all kinds of stuff he did. Member, board of governors. Commodore, pre first prep, uh, just a bunch of stuff. Lifetime Achievement Award, Honorary Chairman, Silver Beaver Award, Life, uh, Washington and Lee University Athletic Hall of Fames, just a bunch of stuff. So she came from, a, you know, she. Yeah, so hold on one second. Let me go to. Uh, all right, so 
now. There's more, just give me one minute, guys. Oh, that was that one. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my email and I have all these records here of all either Shonda or family or whatever, you know, depending on, there's a different one. So right here, this is going to be Shonda's mom in the yearbook. So hold on to this one, third row. First row, so she's the first row. One, two, three, four, five, six. First row is sixth over. One, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't. I count right. It don't look like her. Hold on. One, two. Oh, that's probably how it went. They, this is probably counted as one, two. That's what it was. Okay. So, um, yeah, because the first one's Miss Dietrich. Okay. I was going to say, that does not look like her. This looks more like her. Okay. So, this is her mom right here. I don't know what grade. This is 1964. Lajala. But there's, there's some clear pictures here. But I just... I just want to show you everything. I just emailed them all to me, so I had. This is her mom with a in the yearbook at World Affairs. So she was the secretary of the World Affairs Club. She's right here in the middle. And there's her name right here. So, I think she looks like Shonda. I think she definitely, you could tell she's, you know, her mom. All right. Here's her right here. That's the one where I was saying that it's uh, 1967. And she's already going by Arnold. So, I'm thinking, I'm really thinking that that maybe either her dad because we don't know who her mom's dad is either joan who who was joan joan was always listed by herself they now i now have yet to see her listed as a, with a husband so either vanzel is her dad's name or arnold's her dad's name i i don't know i'm a little bit confused about the vanzel and but yeah there's a picture of her mom and this is alabama gold mustang organized constructive criticism Millie, come on, gang. So they called her Millie. Wait, for whoever laughs and loves, the sun will shine forever. Alabama, Gold Mustang, organized, constructive criticism. Millie, come on, gang. TV. I don't really, I don't get what they're saying here. But, all right. There we go. Her hair. <laughs> well, they gotta love the hair, huh? <laughs> oh, Lordy. Oh, did I miss a gifting? Oh, thank you, Patty. You're, all, you're always gifting. Thank you. Hey, Nina. Hey, Patronus. Thank you, guys. Sherilyn, what's up? I'll be in chat after I show everything just because... For those people that only are here to get the content, I gotta—I guess I gotta make them happy too. But no, I'll keep checking in with you guys. We'll definitely though chat after. You know me how I do at the end. <laughs> but I keep looking, making sure I don't miss anything for you, if you guys. Okay, 
so here's another one that's her her mom so remember this is these are all shonda's mom that i'm showing you right now they're just different years of the yearbook so this was 1966 i guess i should have said the date shoot i'm sorry i don't even know what the last oh wait the other one was 65 so that was 65 66 what is this one 67 <laughs> So you can kind of see how she okay wait wait hold on so 65 66 <laughs> 67 you're going to see her growing <laughs> changing styles i should say <laughs> um oh here this is going to be shonda now okay so shonda looks like there's somewhere she'll have those glasses that she looks dorky and then some she actually like these she doesn't. She looks, I don't know, you'll see. Um, I, I did look at these all yesterday, so I was kind of familiar with everybody was, and now, oh yeah, so <laughs> there's Shonda right here. <laughs> And this one right here. <laughs> so this is uh wait. This is in ninety four, Huntsville High School. And this is a picture of circulation staff, Purian circulation staff? What is I don't even know what that is. Purian circulation staff. Whatever the heck that it means, I don't know. This is 94. So she would have been like, so she's born in 79. So she would have been 15. The other one I think was 94 too. So she's about 15. Here she is right here. So she's on the hurdles and jumps. Sprints, hurdles, and jumps. <laughs> All right. Ninety five. So she would have been what, sixteen here? Um, is this, I hope I don't have to go through that and look. I did, I did look at these quick, but I might have to see Shonda. Dang it. Wait, there is not even any freaking... Look, it doesn't even say row one or row, row two or row three. It's got to be one, two, three, four, five. I don't know. This one's going to be hard. Oh, well, if I can't find one. Does anybody see? This is the one I was trying to look at yesterday. I couldn't. I, it's like, I'll just find it later because I couldn't find her. I don't, so I don't know, guys. The way they have that listed. That's not her, is it? No. wonder if she just wasn't here that day and it was listed. And they just listed it because maybe they just listed everybody because look, there's no rhyme or reason. It doesn't say row one, row two. It doesn't say that. So I wonder if they just listed everybody that's in the FCA, whatever that is. And maybe she didn't show up for that picture because I couldn't find her yesterday when I was looking either. And I thought, oh, I'll just find it tomorrow. And I still can't find it. I bet she just wasn't there for it. Anybody see it? I really don't. Oh, well. Not a big deal. Let 
This is 1993. Track and field. Right here. This is 1994, so she would have been 15. Right. <laughs> With those glasses. Which actually, like, there is a time that, like, that's kind of um, coming back in style, or already came back in style, like that kind of type of glasses. But back then, like, I don't, you don't see many people with that, huh? So I'm not even, I don't even know why I laughed at it. I mean, I'm not. But here's the thing. It looks like she had braces, but why do I think, why does her teeth don't look like she has like, like nice teeth that had braces? Because there's a couple pictures you could tell she has braces on. I guess they're, yeah, I guess. Think about like poles and like probably in her jeans, her teeth would have been really messed up maybe. And so her teeth aren't that crooked. So yeah, she probably does. She just doesn't have like the typical, you know, when people have braces, they have that typical like braces. Look, like you could usually tell that they had them. Um, but I don't even know I was laughing at her glasses. That's, I don't think glasses are funny. Sorry. <laughs> really silly of me. I guess it's just because of her and I just don't like her. So I'm just trying to find anything. <laughs> Right here, though. Wait, yeah, what year was this? Hold on. I want to see what year. 93. So she would have been, this is a little bit younger, uh, a year before the other ones. So she would have been um, 14 here. And this is 95, so she would have been 16. <laughs> uh, I don't know why it's making me laugh for some reason, because it's just... Yeah, 16. All right. This is 93, so, or 90, wait, hold on. Oh, there she is, right here. So you could tell she has braces. So this is diving, diving team. Hey, Trinity. Okay, hold on one second. I gotta find my other ones. So I just went through that one. Now let me go. There we go. So these will be her dad or stepdad or whatever. I don't even know what he is. I guess stepdad, yeah. Hold on. So this is kind of cool. I found, um, hold on. Wait, is this the right one? I know I had one that actually had him on it too, but this looks like this maybe is him and his. Oh yeah, it is his his dad. Oh yeah, because his dad is Edward F. Trammell. That's right. 
So this is um, census. Census is Kenneth when he was uh, seven years old and his sister and then his dad is right here and his, his dad and his mom is the census. See? So that's his dad, his mom, his sister. Kenneth E. And dad is Kenneth F. Okay, so here is his dad, her, Kenneth, her stepdad's, uh, like high school or school club, like school pictures, like yearbook pictures, I should say. Um, he is right here, right there. down here he's got his head turned he's right there I wish I could find a more recent picture of him I can't find anything past like his high school picture wise if any of you guys can let me know I'm not done though I've only what I just got home so I've only had a couple days to look I mean but I do want to get those phone, another phone call out, and then I have something coming in. So I don't this week. So I don't know how much time I'll have to do it. I mean, eventually I'll get to it. But if you guys find a picture of him, let me know a recent one. Um. Oh yeah, I could have kept it up. Sorry. So here's another one. So he was the treasurer right here. And then that's him again. That same picture. It almost looks like he has a cigarette right there. It's a pen probably, right? Uh. And then... There. This is like... Pep Squad. He's right here. And he says, to do and not to dare, to say and not to care. Is that like his quote? To do and not to dare, to say and not to care. Hmm. All righty. Pep squad. Like, what is a pep squad anyway? I don't even know what it is. <laughs> uh, all right, let me get next here. Oh, that's just the same picture. What is it? Oh, yeah, it's just that same picture. Same ones. I think these might all be the doubles. Oh, this is that plane crash. Okay, so these are actually all ones. sure that these aren't going to be all doubles before I... Oh, I guess these are some new ones. Okay. 
This is um, uh, Shonda's mom. Oh, no, that is the same one. We already saw that. Gosh, did I accidentally send these things to me twice? <laughs> these look like the same, but it's like a different email. I wonder if I did. Hold on. With my OCD, I gotta at least make sure that I'm not missing any. <laughs> this looks like a new one. Yeah, right? Or... No, it's the same one. Whoa, I need to, um, hold on. Exit out some of these. Oh yeah, this one is 64. No, we didn't see that. Remember we had 65, 6, 7? So this is right before. Yes. Huh. Right there. I should put them all up to like an order. Oh, that's just information like it gives addresses and stuff or it helps it was it helps me be able to like you know link everything to make sure um but i don't need to share it i just wanted to see if there's any more pictures all right so we got that now you guys want to see who Randy is? Well, it's not a picture, but it explains who. Randy Miriam, the guy that uh, calls Paul. Which I think we do have some more calls I gotta get together. So I do think there'll probably be more with him, I'm guessing. All right. Let's bring it in. Okay. All right. So here is Randy, the guy that we have been wondering about. Okay, so man watched Miss Michigan torture case on TV. He traveled from Wisconsin to befriend the suspect uh kenosha wisconsin it was cold january weekend when randy miriam let me make this a little bit big bigger um randy miriam turned on the television to indulge indulge in a hobby he enjoys watching criminal cases oh hold on guys hold on hold on hold on hold on no 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 there we go i want to do it that way i wanted to use my new setting here Okay. Um, the Kenosha, Wisconsin man tunes into court TV wanting to know the outcome of the cases and see justice served. Yet within five minutes of watching one case in particular, the trial of Shonda Vander Ark, he found himself troubled. Who wouldn't be? The details surrounding Vander Ark's and her older son's Paul Ferguson cases should be filled, could be filled wait, sorry, could fill the average person with anger and rage. The mother and son were charged for their individual roles in the inflicting months worth of punishment and torture. Let me take a sip, hold on one second, guys. Oh God. The mother and son were charged for their individual roles in inflicting months worth of punishments and torture, like ice baths and force feeding bread soaked in hot sauce to a 15 year old Timothy Ferguson that led the malnourished boys death in July 2022. After arrest, after his arrest, Paul Ferguson, 21, cooperated with the Muskegon County prosecutors in exchange for leniency in his case. Ferguson testified against Vander Ark in December during her murder trial. It was while he was listening to Ferguson's testimony that Miriam started questioning things, started to question things. 
when Paul testified, testified, it took about five minutes to see that he's functioning at a dimish, diminished capacity, Miriam told M Live Muskegon Chronicle in a recent interview. In that moment, Ferguson reminded Miriam of his 23-year-old son who was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. When Miriam watched Ferguson, he couldn't help but see his son. Paul's demeanor was dead on, Miriam said. After the trial concluded, Miriam started researching anything he could find on Ferguson, browsing through Ferguson's social media accounts and reviewing the police investigation. Miriam even reached out to Muskegon County Chief Trial Prosecutor Matt Robert, Roberts, who prosecuted both Ferguson and Vander Ark's cases. So remember, he did. He on the phone call, he said, hey, I even talked to the prosecutor. He didn't like Paul's lawyer. He, was, he didn't think Paul's lawyer was really doing that good at the time. Anyway, um, Randy wanted to help Paul out in whatever way he could. Roberts told M. Live Muskegon Chronicle, with years of experience working with those who have special needs, Miram said he was determined to help Ferguson. There are a lot of people who are very eager to hate Paul, and I worry about our justice system when it's moved by such people, he said. In an effort to help the Miram family, or in an effort to help the Miram family, some 200 plus miles away, befriended Ferguson while he was incarcerated in Muskegon County Jail. Miram created an account to communicate with Ferguson during the week. The first two conversations he said were very awkward. I think he, he was very guarded, Miriam, recall, Miriam recalled. I tried to keep our conversation friendly and explained how my family would like to get to know him better. After weeks of conversing, Miriam and his adult son made the five-hour trip from Kenosha to Muskegon County Circuit Court on February 26th to learn what punishment Ferguson would receive. During the hearing, it was revealed that Ferguson was evaluated by two different doctors at the request of defense attorney Joshua Eldon Brady, who both determined Ferguson did not suffer from an intellectual disability and did not meet criteria for any specific mental disorder. I attributed the, his overall demeanor and presentation to factors such as lack of socialization, normalization of abnormal dynamics and experiences, poor interpersonal skills, and emotional dysregulation, Judge Matthew Cassell read from one doctor's report. Ultimately, Ferguson was sentenced to a minimum of 30 years in prison on a first-degree CA charge. It was a sentence Miriam felt was over the top. Miriam and his son left the courthouse discouraged. The Wisconsin father said he knew he had to do something to help. Now, through his own funding, Miriam is in the process of acquiring a new attorney to aid Ferguson in appealing his case. After a felony conviction, an appellant has 42 days to file a claim of appeal. The claim does not have to state the reason for the appeal or the perceived lack of justice, but it must state that the right will be exercised. There will be barriers appealing the case, Miriam said, with living in another state and not being familiar with criminal law, but that's not stopping him. I don't want to do any of this, but I have to help Paul, he said. So there we go. There is a, um, Randy. Oh, and somebody sent me, hold on, give me one second, a screenshot and actually, that was one thing I didn't get to. We could do this together. I wanted to go through that video again and see if I could get even better screenshots. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hold on. I just want to give that person a shout out that um, sent me this article. Because that, I mean, I'm so busy doing, looking down the uh, Shonda's family that it, I might not have seen this for a minute. Uh, so thank you. If you're l watching, thank you for sending this. That article this article to me because i mean now we know and i'm sure there's going to be now more phone calls coming up with him so now it'll it'll make sense um dang it it's i don't know my internet's not uh letting me download to see who it shoot okay um I'm going to show you this picture. So somebody else sent me this, that they caught a picture of them all, which I think it is them. I'll show you what I'm talking about, of Randy 
and um, probably JoJo, I'm guessing. Hey, where? Dude, I have done this. Oh, here it is. I was going to say, don't tell me again that it's not showing up. Okay, look. And I thought we could go through and see if we could catch even any um, any more. But this was the Paul sentencing. And since we know JoJo was planning on going, and we know it wasn't now, we know it wasn't the Vanderarks, uh, the grandparents. So, jo remember I was thinking it was, uh, she was the grandma at the time. So I'm like, oh, she was sick. She couldn't make it. But it wasn't. So she probably did make it, JoJo. And Randy, remember, they're talking about, oh, making a joke. We should hold a sign. I should hold up a sign of Randy Miriam. So I'm thinking this is JoJo. This is Randy and his son, Isaac. I said, I'm get it, uh, got to be right. They're sitting behind Paul. Paul kept turning around. You know, JoJo's saying how she wanted to meet Randy. Unless if for some reason this is Randy's wife and JoJo's not sitting with him. What do you guys think? Jojo or Randy's wife. But let's try to see if we can actually see any more. And we I was gonna bring up that video and look through it, see if we could catch any more screenshots of it. But before that, I just wanted to show you something real quick. Already, she, well, I already had the screenshot how she's she is uh, friends with David Ramsey. I just wanted to kind of show you how I linked a couple of the things. It, it really helped having her middle name too, which linked to her original. Um, first of all, the background search, which had a picture of her Helen. I'm talking about Shonda's sister, and then it was able to link to her original Facebook, and then which linked to this. And then we're doing a background search. Helen and David, her brother, they both have the same address listed as one of their previous addresses, which is another link to both of them. So I feel pretty confident that this is Helen Shonda's sister. Um, I always like to show you like my thought process and how I found it and how I came to conclusions. So I know some people probably is annoyed with it, but I like to show you the proof and how I why I feel like this is her. But I I don't want to like put the address out there even though I don't think either of them live there anymore but just hopefully you guys trust that they both had the same address linked in their background searches I know you guys why would I lie about that but um, I'm not going to put that out there what the addresses are um, even though it, that stuff is public but um, but yeah so they both had the same one as on the list um, but yeah and then she's just got some photos you know and then this is the one that's interesting because it's uh wait I missed this comment dude I'm glad I came here. How did I miss this the first time going through oh because I was probably so busy trying to get everything ready for this live. Look at this. This, yeah, and this is even confirms it even more. It looks just like Paige, somebody says. Paige is the other sister. You know, so that even puts another tick in the in the, the connection of them. Um, thank you, Soul. Us, uh, Helen is Shonda's sister. Yes, Helen is one of Shonda's sister. Helen has Sha Helen Shonda has Helen and Paige, the two sisters, and David. Helen is one of Shonda's sisters. Um, this is and I explained this earlier, but just in case if somebody's just coming in now, Helen, this Shandy Lackey is her partner. Okay. So she has her own personal page, which is Helen Trammell, Helen Bell Trammell. Um, but then she has this page with her partner. And so I think Shandy Lackey is like her partner's name and then Helen. So that Shandy, Shandy Lackey is not Helen's name, Hel Helen. And then she just like combined them for some reason like that. But look, she says, um oh this is another post that's why i didn't see it hold on so this says it looks like Paige, and helen says yeah i know that's what hurts i can't be around Paige because of this pic 
So that's why I didn't see it. Look, she posts this a different time where she says on her birthday. I was going to say, how did I miss that? That's exactly why. Look, hold on. Let me find the other post. Uh... Wait, how do I? I just wanted to find that other post. I did a screenshot of it. Yeah, it was definitely a different post, but with the same picture. I guess I could just see what, hold on a second, I could probably just see what the date is and put it in. I just want to see. Okay, so it was uh, 2015, July 14th. Okay, hold on, let's go back. I'll put a filter by the date. Sorry, guys. Okay. 2015. Um... I probably will go through this more to see if I can, if there, I can find more, you know what I'm saying? But I only had two days to try to get stuff done or a day and a half. Where the heck is that post? I'm getting so mad right now. <laughs> oh, it's 16. I go. Well, I need glasses, so I didn't zoom in, and it was it's 2016. Oh my lord! I just looked at the picture again. I must not have seen it right. I just want to. I just want to show you guys. Wait. So how's it, how, have everybody had a good weekend now? While well, I'm looking for this, we could chat a little bit. You guys have a good weekend. And you guys don't, nobody go to her page and cause it. You know what I'm saying? Just leave, she has nothing to do with it. Don't go and like try to start any, you know what I'm saying? Because I know there's a lot of times when there's cases, people will go over there and to just their family and like bug them and like, yell at him about like their family member like oh your sister's just i wouldn't just don't even you know what i'm saying don't do that it just causes problems like us in the true crime community we would like to be able to like dig and deep dive and, and find all this stuff and not have to worry about it like people going over and harassing him we're just doing it for information so we can learn about you know the family or the case but we don't have to worry about like sharing what we found and then having people taking that and being idiots you know like don't we want to be able to keep deep diving stuff and not have to worry about that kind of stuff or you know people getting where it comes to a point where we can't even do that if if people keep at you know what i'm saying if people keep like harassing the family members okay here it is i found it okay so here's the one that I saw. It says, I want to wish this precious woman a happy birthday. Even though you are not here, I still want to say I miss you and I love you, Mama. Every day I think about you and wish you were here. Know you're in heaven watching over me. R.I.P. Millie. Bosh. Bosh, dude. That's another name that comes up. That's another name that Mildred, their mom, is connected with is the Bosh. And I even went through on the background searches, I went through a lot of the Boshes and I couldn't really connect which Bosch could be, could one of the Boshes be Shonda's biological dad. 
So that's it's either a Ramsey, a Bosch, uh, well, Trammell's the stepdad. So the I'm talking about Shonda's dad is either probably a Ramsey, a Bosch, or uh, there's one more. Arnold, no, we figure out Arnold was, was had to do with her grandma because the, Mildred had it. She used that name back like when she was in school. So yeah, Bosch is another one. So Millie, I mean, right here, if this doesn't, another link, Millie, you know, and Bosch is linked to him. If you do background searches, that name is linked to uh, Shonda's mom. Okay, so we have this and then we have the other where she posts it again and somebody talks about Paige, her sister. She's friends with David. So I think, uh, I think I could say like 99%. Well, I, I feel like 100% this is her sister, but I'll say 99% because I'm until I would like talk to the person with my own mouth, I can't say 100%. But yeah, anyway. So Millie Bosch. Now my lip. I gotta put, okay. So. That's why I was like, because of people, the people that sometimes do like go her oh no i just hope nobody goes and harasses that's why it's like i would go through this with you guys and we could like try to like find stuff together but i don't even want to do it almost because of uh, but i guess i can't control what people do like i'm i'm just doing it to learn but it's just i just wish people like we could do it and nobody goes over to the people's accounts and bothers them you know all right so we have that um anyway oh thank you abelis wow thank you so much five memberships who got them thank you i'm trying to find that uh other post again because i want to see who says that oh so she posts this picture a few times she posts it for mother's day um i'm trying to find the other one where the person where they talk about page real quick i just want to see that real quick again oh here's the other oh because that's a different okay so now we have this is the one where it says today is my mom's birthday even though she is in heaven she's in heaven i'm still miss her every day like i said and her birthday is in july i couldn't find an uh, exact date but it is july so that's another connection um so I, I forget what year now but uh i'm trying to find that other one though hold on give me one minute i want to find the one where they there this one uh wow this is a different one another mother's day two different mother's days so that must be like the only is that the only picture she has of her like she keeps put like it keeps posting the same picture and here she says Millie Hosh again. Okay. So that's a clue that at least probably when she died, that's what she was going by. I'm guessing, right? Um, Oh, here it is. This is the one that I was trying to get from. Okay, so this is the one I was trying to get where it says looks just like Paige. So. Right here. Oh, I have that one that I have. Look, I have these. I have um, I have it pulled up where it has all of them. I think Stacy, the one that you message i was gonna go through some more of those articles if it's from m live i have it 
Um, I just want to see who this is because this person obviously knows Paige. I just want to see something real quick. Why is no is Paige not have? Yeah, I don't know. So remember, Paige is the one that writes a statement. I want to go over that too. I wanted to read it last time, but she's the one that writes that statement about their upbringing. So Shonda's sister, but if you want me to go over, hold on one second. One second to go. I have people like messaging me and yeah, game and sleuthing. I have those the articles. I was gonna go over more of those, but I just don't know what order. But actually, I'm coming toward. I'm coming to kind of a. And where I could actually go over some of the stuff I wanted to go over, like uh, Paige's statement. I'll read that article um, that talks about whatchamacallit. Talks about um, Nolan's letter. I was planning on reading that one. There's a few that I was going to maybe read from. The, it's from M Live, the same one from the Randy Miriam. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Abellis. Hi, Anmag. I don't know. I'm I'm going to try. I'm going to keep trying to find more stuff, but let's read this. Man didn't want brother to go to prison for torturing their sibling to death. So Muskegon, okay, so facing years behind bars, a man asked a Muskegon County judge to consider an alternative option to prison for his brother's role in abusing and torturing their younger sibling to death. So this is Nolan. He's, they're obviously talking about Nolan, it's, and we know that Nolan wrote the judge a letter the judge is making those not like private so they're not public but the one wait a minute remember he said that but how did this how is this uh article able to kind of get an idea of what was in the letter then because the judge said he was going to make those private right anyway the judge did did the complete opposite handing Paul Ferguson a minimum 30-year stint in prison for playing the enforcer when carrying out punishments that led to the 15-year-old Timothy Ferguson's death. The maximum portion of the sentence was set to at 100 years. Ferguson, 21, was before Muskegon County Circuit Judge Matthew Cassell on Monday, February 26, with a clean haircut and a blue jail jumpsuit and handcuffed at the wrists and ankles. He pleaded guilty to first-degree CA, and in the days after his mother, Shonda, was convicted of first-degree murder last December. The two were charged after Timothy was found dead July 6, 2022. The teen who had autism and was speech and motor impaired weighed only 69 pounds. Um, he says, you know, but Ferguson and, and Shonda punished Timothy by feeding him hot sauce, putting him in ice baths, depriving him of sleep, locking the refrigerator in food cabinets. It wasn't the same scene inside the courtroom Monday morning compared to just a month ago when Shonda was sentenced to life in prison without a chance at parole. The gallery had plenty of open seating and there was less media outlets present. There was a, also nobody present to deliver a victim impact statement on Timothy's behalf. Nolan Ferguson, Paul and Timothy's brother, traveled hundreds of miles to be in Muskegon for his mother's sentencing. He was not in the courtroom Monday but wrote a statement to the judge. It says they, M at live obtained a copy of the letter. Did, well, did I not hear what? I swear the judge said he was making it private. Didn't you guys hear the same thing or did I hear that wrong? Because M live would just be a media too. You know?
Okay, so Okay, I What are you, Dark City? What are you talking about? Are you talking about when I was saying don't harass the family? I'm, I don't know. I hope that's not what you're saying because no, I would never be okay with harassing a family member of somebody that did something that has nothing to do with what happened. Is that what you're talking about? That make that would make no sense. Helen would have nothing to do with this. So what? You know, no, I don't care. Anytime I would always feel the same way if that's what you're saying it has nothing to do with censorship. I would not be okay. I mean, that wouldn't be something I would like, uh, would recommend ever. But maybe you're talking about something else. I don't know why I felt like that's what that was about, but maybe not. Um, anyway, um, sorry, I was just reading some comments. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I will not sugarcoat and say that I am not deeply unhappy with Paul for not finding the courage to say something to anyone about what was happening in that home, he wrote. But I have to take one last stand for him. He said Vander Ark took advantage of Ferguson's incapability to stand up for himself or Timothy and manipulated him into committing horrid acts and drastically outside of his character. So that basically... This is quoting uh, Nolan right here about he doesn't, I will not sugarcoat and say that I am not deeply unhappy with Paul for not finding the courage to say something to anyone about what was happening in that home. But I have to take one last stand for him. Yeah. And then it, so then he's trying to say that he was manipulated. Um, and that Shonda took advantage of him. And his incapability of standing up for himself. I don't know. Um, he has had issues since we were very young. Issues that our parents never cared to address or have compassion for, he wrote. He has always felt out of place, even when he has people like me showing him love as best as we can. I understand that the law sees him as a 20-year-old young man culpable in my brother, baby brother's abuse. But as his closest relative, I urge you to see that that is not the case, he added. Let me take that down. Dang it. Why do I have that up? Ugh. Huh. Nolan Ferguson asked the judge if he would reconsider alternative rehabilitation to prison and noted that Paul Ferguson has people in the outside world who are willing to help him. Even if your decision is that he does, does need to spend time behind bars for the sake of justice, I am prepared to take him in at any time, he wrote. Unlike Shonda, there is still hope for Paul, but it is my solemn belief that hard time is not benefiting of his crime. In, in this special circumstance. That hard time is not benefiting of his crime in this special circumstance. Paul showed some form of remorse as he read a letter in court addressing his actions. I asked the judge for nothing more than mercy and fairness to offer me compassion I might learn from him. He said, I only hope to better myself in the coming days and serve my time with what little honor I have left and to make right my faults and search for it of a better tomorrow. In fashioning a sentence, Cassell told Ferguson he could have done a number of things to stop the torture and abuse, but opted not to. I don't believe that you're sorry. I don't, Cassell said. I don't think you have empathy. I don't think you have any emotion whatsoever. Believe me, I've tried to sit here and I try and tried to think, well, maybe Mr. Ferguson is not as bad as mom, the judge added. I think you're just as bad, if not worse. Wow. Um. Uh. Shoot, hold on one second. Let's 
So what do you guys think of it? Of the, what his brother said. I mean, he, that is his brother. He's trying. He loves his brother. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be mad at uh, anybody for trying to, you know, be there for their brother, you know. It, it, however, I don't know. That's what he felt like he had to do. I mean, I don't think we should judge anybody on that because if this was like, you know, maybe your brother and you might really feel like what Nolan said, you know, he might really feel that way that he's a good person because, you know, when you, this is your family, so you might not be able to see things as clear as the outside can see things. So, I mean, wouldn't you do that for your sibling? Write, at least try and write a letter and, and try to take him in. Maybe, I don't, I mean, I'm not going to judge him for doing that. But, um, Shonda hates her name pronounced Shonda like Panda. I will forever pronounce her name like that. Anyone else? Shanda. Did you notice that one, um, who was pronouncing it Shanda? Somebody was pronouncing it on the phone call to Paul. Was it Randy? Maybe it was Randy. I think it was Randy that kept pronouncing it Shanda. I don't think it was the HBO guy. Maybe it was one of them was. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying that the judge is going to listen or I think he should have listened, but of course the brother, he, he's got to at least take a chance and at least write a letter. I mean, I would write a letter. He's going to write a letter at least, you know, I would, I don't have anything against no one for writing a letter. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not saying any. I'm not saying everybody would be able to do it, but we can't hate him for doing that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying everybody should act the same, and everybody, if they're in that situation, should do the same thing. I'm not saying that. Um, but I'm saying you can't really be mad at him for doing that. You know what I mean? You know, for writing a letter for your, his brother that he loves, because maybe he can't see love is blind sometimes in a way like that's your family so you always see the he's going to see the good in him and he's going to see like no he you know he could be rehabilitated I because that's your brother and you know he, it's your family so he i just i'm not going to be i'm not mad that he wrote a letter that's all but i i am kind of confused how m live got that i almost want to listen to listen to what the judge said i swear the judge said he was going to seal those right did he not Oh, thanks, Shimmy Dancer. Shimmy Dancer. Yeah, no, I think the judge got it right. I agree with the judge. I'm not saying I agree with Nolan. No, please. No, I hope people don't twist that now. That's not what I'm saying at all. I definitely don't agree with what Nolan said, but I, I agree with what the judge did. You, well, you know, you watched it with me. I was really happy with how the judge being able to be so being so thorough and being able to see so clear on it and like he nailed everything but i'm just not mad that nolan you know wrote a letter to him that's all all right let's watch um i'm gonna remove that i want to watch that the sentencing because i want to see if I, we could get any other good shots of uh randy and jojo okay One second, let me exit out of some of this stuff. All right. But I'm live, they have a bunch of good articles. I've read a bunch of them when I, when that person sent me the one, I just went through and read a bunch. So that was the, the article that I just read was the same company that wrote the article about Randy too. So um, the M live or whatever. So they they have some good stuff. All right, I'm gonna bring the um sentencing and see if we can get some good clear shots of. I feel like was there something else I wanted to go over too? Hold on, let me think. 
I want to get a phone call out soon. Um, I might not go too late tonight so I could work on it and try to get one out like tonight or tomorrow morning, hopefully. Um, what am I doing here? Oh my god. Oh my lord. Sometimes, you know, you do something on like automatic. I'm like doing like on my channel and it's not what I was trying, not what I wanted to do. Like what I usually do before a live where I go in and do the customization. I, was, I just went and did that, but that's not what I wanted to do. Actually. Okay, so we're going to do Paul sentencing. I want to find Paul Ferguson sentencing. Okay, so let's look at this one. This sh first. See if uh, we could catch. I know there was a couple ones that did it. See if we could catch any of them. I only hope to better myself in the coming days and serve my time. I ask from some sort of intellectual disability, whether it be autism or something else. And uh, there's a couple of references to that throughout his uh, Mr. Shaver, to Dr. Shaver's report. It's not, uh, audio sucked. First oh, oh, there we go. There, well, if that really is, that's either JoJo or Randy's wife. Why am I thinking that? I don't know. I was going to say I'm thinking it's more JoJo, but because Randy didn't say anything about his wife going, did he? Hold on, let me. How do I screenshot on this? Is it the same way? Was on page uh, two of it. Oh, wait, I could zoom in. I forgot. Hold on. I forgot you could zoom in on. Um... Or wait, only on your phone. Can you not zoom in on the computer? Wait a minute. On your phone, you could zoom in. Hold on one second, guys. Huh, I don't know was on page uh, two of the report's uh, first full paragraph, and it well, says... I'll see what else, I'll see what they will show it then. He, referring I'll to Mr. Ferguson, is clearly either psychotic or suffering from symptoms of a mood disorder at the time of the interview. And he was apparently functioning within at least the normal range of intellectual ability at this time. Thus, in my opinion, he does not suffer from a chronic psychotic disorder, a chronic mood disorder, or an intellectual disability. There is another reference more to the end of the report uh, where he indicates uh, thus his is referring to Mr. Ferguson. His educational history is inconsistent mm. with him suffering from intellectual deficits and as noted above he was apparently functioning within at least the normal range of intellectual ability at the time of the court interview. In my opinion the defendant clearly does not suffer from an intellectual disability. So the court, uh, that was helpful in the court because as, as in, in some of the letters that I received. No, I agree. I think it is. She did say she was going to try to sit with him, but then I'm thinking, so I'm, I'm leaning more towards it's, it's Jojo. Um, but then I was, I was like, well, what if, you know, she didn't end up doing that or whatever. And then what if that's his wife? So I didn't want to for sure say, but I'm, I'm leaning more towards it being Jojo too. But wait, Fritz, how do you know that she's from uh, Arizona? You said she's from Arizona. How do we do we know well, that? I mean, he, there was concern that Mr. Ferguson is. How do you know that? Uh, and I think probably more toward. Oh, that. she said she did say that, didn't she? It's easier to because they're talking about weather. Is that how you know it from this? The court does I take some physical capacity into consideration. I think it's important to understand the full situation. So the court uh, and that and and. Although those are two small portions of the opinion. No, the, 
the one that the person sent me was from this channel the screenshot so i want to see i want to go i want to look through this first that one that i showed you first it was from 13 it wasn't from court tv so i want to go through this and then i could go through other ones but i just want to see ferguson it could be on a different 13 one though because sometimes they play different is like break it up but it definitely has a 13 logo from the Oklahoma Department of Health and Human Services. Look through his history. He looks back real quick. He's probably, he's when he's still in shock from getting 30 years to. Wait, what father? It didn't look like, so it must be on another one of theirs, but we could try Court TV. But I want to make sure I didn't miss. Somebody just sent that to me, so. I don't know where she got it from exactly, but it did have the 13 logo. So that's why I wanted to check. It must be, yeah. Uh, Okay, so sometimes there's a f hold on. All right, let's try another one. So sentencing. There's another one. See what I mean? Here's the live one that we watched. And then they re-uploaded the other one. Fourteenth Circuit Court, County Muskegon is now in session. The Honorable Matthew R. Casel is presiding. And you may be seated. There, there we go. Okay. Any comments regarding sentencing? Yes, Ryan, thank you. Um, it, as I've said to the court before, uh, uh, this is. Here they are. They're, they're. As it relates to Paul, this is one of the most difficult cases I think I've ever had to deal with, um, not just from the standpoint of how difficult the subject matter was here, the tragic death of Timothy. I wonder who this is. Um, yeah. And who but this is. Myself, and, and I'm not saying anything today, really, that I haven't told uh, uh, in the multiple meetings that hmm. I've had in the trial and this cooperation with, that, there, that I view him as um, favorable and that he was willing to help us and to testify against his mother, which I'm sure was very difficult for him to do under the circumstances, uh, but that I was also angry, just frankly angry and, and, and shocked and appalled at, at his treatment of Timothy because he was, for all intents and purposes, the, the enforcer arm of this two-person, uh, the two people most directly responsible for Timothy's death, that he was the one that would be allowed most of the punishments that were directed by Ms. Vander Ark, and certainly um, she's received the, the appropriate sentence for her role in this as well. So I, I had mixed emotions about Paul even up to oh shoot i was so i wasn't ready to pause it about paul that's where she got the screenshot was that these right here gosh it's so blurry though so she got a really good screenshot because it really is blurry whoever sent that to me was really good Unless if there's another time they scroll over. He was willing to help us and to testify against his mother, which I'm sure. So I think somebody commented, and I. 
but I was also angry. Now I'm going to mute this. And I think they might be on to something. So hold on. Let me just catch this real quick. Come on. I wonder who that girl is right there. You know, is it just like true crime fans or like. So, yeah, Randy, his son and Jojo, I think. Yeah, she got it. She, whoever got that screenshot was like pretty clear for. Let's see if there's another time they scroll back over. Oh, yeah, look, they do scroll back over again. Maybe there's a better one. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. That's, this is the one she had to have got it from. Because the other one was just like too quick. Probably on the way back. Ooh, what is that guy? What is that person being, that girl being talked to by the cop? <laughs> Did you see that? And she's like looking around. Whoa, I wonder what's going on. Does she have to leave? They're looking back. They keep looking back. Huh. All these little things we miss when we're like so just waiting to hear the sentence. Like I didn't even wonder what she wonder what that was all about. Huh. I'm gonna wait till they scroll back down or or pan back over. And then remind me, I want to tell you about who I think JoJo is. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm not looking at chat right now. I'm just trying to get this real quick and then I'll chat with y'all. Then I chat with y'all. I guess I don't even know why I'm really doing this. We already got like probably the clearest shot that that we already have that screenshot that I first showed. It's probably not gonna get any clearer than that, to be honest, but you know me. Yeah, this is exactly where she got it. Yep. All right. Well. Yep. They probably were so disappointed. So that must be the person that reminds him of Paul. All right. Well. Oh, wait. This is the clearest right here. There, that's the best. Here, let me go back. Yeah, that's it. Yep. All right. Man, I wish I knew how to... There, I think that should be the same way to screenshot that, right? It's not, oh, there we go. Come on. Anyway, so yeah, um, dang it, dang it. Oh, there we go. Just give me one minute, guys. One minute, one minute. I just wanted to get a good screenshot. This is probably the clearest we're going to get right here. Don't you think?
How do I have one? I'm going to just add a number in there. I don't know how long it would be already. Okay. Um, what do you guys think? See, I'm glad I just didn't give up, but I kept, <laughs> I kept doing it. Because I think that one might even be a little bit clearer than the one I just got. So I'll zoom in and just... So at least we know, like, kind of have a good look at what she looks like if we ever have to be like, is that her? Okay, so uh, I read a comment, like, I think it was like last week um, in one of the phone calls, under the one of the phone calls. And I think there, this person's on it. I think JoJo is his somebody that wrote to him. Remember when he's talking to, um, I think he was talking about, to Nolan and he was talking about how he wrote some older lady back? she wrote somebody wrote him like he got some letters from some people and he responded to one of them i bet you that's the one like he responded i think he said it was an older lady right so i bet he responded and they started talking pen pal you know and then they started and then started calling each other then um if it's not that one he was talking of i think it's i do think that's that's who it is is somebody he just met there somebody that reached out to him after he was in there and um, that wanted to talk to him. I don't think he knew this person before, JoJo. That's what I'm thinking now. And I'm almost thinking it was that lady he was talking about that reached out. She's like, yeah, and I wrote him back. I wrote her back. She was really nice. Remember? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I bet you that's her. In the middle gallery, black shirt. Oh, how do you know, Bella Blige? Wait, how do you know that? I was wondering who that other girl was, because there's that other lady, and then there's another guy, and then the other one's in a suit. So I'm thinking that one, other one might be like lawyer or something to do with like more professional or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, that one guy that looks more casual, and then you have that other girl that was kind of sitting in the same row, but down. But how do you know that, Bella? I mean, how would you even know that? That's why I'm a little bit confused. Do you know that? I mean, do you know her or something? Wait, gaming, are you talking about the older lady or... You don't think JoJo's a pen? I think JoJo is somebody he met in jail too. I'm I'm thinking he didn't know her before because she doesn't really know his family. You could tell she doesn't really know them. Um but why are you thinking the girl I do I think the black jacket girl is the pen pal. I would put money on it. But why? I don't understand. Why do you think that? Is there something that's making you think that? Oh, okay. Why did I think he said older lady? When he said pen pal. I swear he said older lady. I have to go back and listen to the calls. I don't know in my head I have older lady for that person. Um, Paul said a pen pal. Not the older lady on the phone. I think the younger girl. Like Ryan and Gypsy. Paul said a pen pal. Not the older lady. But I don't understand what you're saying. You're saying Paul said a pen pal, not the older lady. You're saying because he said pen pal, it has to be a younger person? I don't, I'm, I'm a little bit confused about that though. Can you, what does pen pal equate to younger? I'm thinking, what I'm saying is when he told Nolan that, it was before he was talking to JoJo. So that's why he didn't say, oh, it's the person I'm talking on the phone. It was before he even got to that point. Since we don't have the exact dates, it could have been a phone call to Nolan like before he actually started talking to JoJo on the phone. So maybe at that time she was just a pen pal. They, you know what I'm saying? He just wrote her back, but maybe not. I'll have to see. A girl he met about he talked about the yeah I'm gonna have to see exactly how he said that 
I don't know why in my head I was picturing like that his pen pal was an older lady. By something he said. That's so funny because something he said makes you guys think it's younger and something he said made me think it was older. Um. Ex yeah, that's a good, that's a good, that's, a, that's actually a good point. But unless if they told him though, she could have told him like, hey, I'm 35, I'm 65. Um. Yeah, I think one thing for sure we could probably say that that's definitely Randall, Randy, Randall, because, you know, he's with his son. He said he was coming with his son, right? So, yeah, I think that I feel pretty confident that that was Randall, at least. Um, and I feel confident that the older lady on the end was JoJo. I mean, I think everybody, we all kind of, most of us think that that is JoJo. What we're disagreeing about is who JoJo is, if JoJo is a pen pal or how he met JoJo. Either way, I think he met JoJo while he was in there. So I think it did start off as a pen pal or somehow he, she reached out to him while he was in there. I don't know why I'm thinking when that person commented, it was like, yeah, I bet you like just the same way that Randall reached out. I think that he met uh, JoJo the same way he met Randall by being in there and them reaching out, whether it be that lady he's talking about a uh, pen pal or another pen pal that he, that reached out, or maybe that maybe JoJo reached out. Well, she would have had to write him first to be able to get him to call her. So he, if he just met her while he was in prison, she would have had to write him first because she would have had to give him her number so he could have called her unless if he did know her before. But I don't know why I'm thinking the more I think about it that he didn't know her before for some reason. Yeah, he did. She did. She didn't know him though. Marilyn, she mentioned Joe. JoJo did mention Randall. That's how we knew his last name uh, at first. So, no, she mentioned him because she said she never met him. Paul must have told her about Randall. And she's like, I want to meet Randall. So she hadn't met him yet. She's like, and Paul made a joke like, oh, yeah. Or, wait, who made the joke? Maybe I think she might have said that. I think it was her idea. I'll just hold up one of those signs. One of them said that. I don't remember. But hold up one of those signs, you know, when you're waiting for somebody like here to, you know, Randall Miriam or whatever. And she's making a joke. And then he's like, oh, he bought me a pillow. She's like, I want to buy you something. So yeah, she, had, she hadn't met him yet. She knew he was coming to the sentencing and she wanted to meet him. So yeah. I mean, I'm getting a headache. So I don't know, guys. Yeah, either way. I mean, it'd be interesting. Maybe it is the black shirt girl, black lit thing, uh, black jacket lady. But what can it be both? Can't both of them be that he met while they, he was in jail? May, I mean, maybe. Do you guys think I'm going to do a poll because I want to know how many think that he knew her before he went. Hold on a second. That'll be a good poll. Because at first I thought he did until recently. The more phone calls I'm listening to, you know, do a lot of work sometimes and figure it out. So it's probably something I should do on my own. You know what I'm saying? I should do it and then tell you what I what I get. Um, I don't. Yeah, I'm getting oh so ooh, hold on a second oh wait I don't think that looks like her hold on guys I'm going through my uh, emails to see if there's anything interesting wait Yeah, I don't know. Let's read. Um, dang it. I'm sorry. I wish I wouldn't have got off on that. I feel like I'm losing a lot of people here. That Because <laughs> I wanted, at least I wish I would have done what I, I wanted to do a couple things first uh, before I got off on like 
a tangent, but I wanted to read a page's statement. So this is Shonda's sister statement. Okay. Um, I'll try to figure I'll look into that, Jojo. I'm slowly, I'm trying to look into everything. I'm slowly getting answers, but it's just not going to happen overnight or anything. Well, it might happen overnight, <laughs> but just give me a minute. I still got to do jail calls. I still have something coming in this week. So I still got a bunch of stuff. So, but I'll, I'll get there. We'll figure it out. I think I'm confident, but by the end of me uploading all the jail calls and me done basically with this case, I am confident that we're going to know who she is. We're going to be able to figure it out. So don't worry. Okay, so Paige says, I just want to remind everybody what she said about their upbringing, okay? Okay, Judy, thanks. Oh, gaming? That's, oh, that was from the two different ones? Hold on a second, though. Oh. I was wondering why you sent me two of the same pictures. I'm like, why is she sending me two of the same pictures? Oh, so... Uh, gaming and sleuthing said... Hold on. Oh, yeah, it is. Hold on a second, guys. I want to show you real quick. So maybe this is. But why are... Okay, so wait, Gamey. So you sent it to me, but why are you saying not our JoJo? Why are you so... I'm confused. Why are you convinced it's not when that's a, that's a match right there? I mean, that's one of the matches that it looks like that could be her... Maybe it could be her son, Ryan. She has a son, Ryan. So why are you convinced that it's not her? I'm not convinced it is her, but I'm not, I can't say for sure it's not her. I'm confused why you are so sure it's not, that's all. But that's a good find. So look, this one is posted by uh, Ryan and then this one's jo uh, Jody. And they're... But why, that's kind of weird. If Ryan's her son, why would she post the one without him? You know what I'm saying? So maybe Ryan isn't her son. Maybe it's just coincidence. Because, like, I guess what's the chance? Of course there's a chance that somebody has a friend named Ryan, right? And that's not that weird. But, okay, here's the thing, though. Not only does she have a friend, Ryan, but she's posting pictures of at least the girl. But she's not... If you go through her profile, it's weird because if Ryan's her son, why is she only posting pictures of the girl? So when I was going through her profile, it was her that I was finding, not him. Jody's, I mean. So if Ryan is her son, why would she only be posting pictures of her? So that makes me think that this person isn't ryan's not her son maybe jody actually is either related or friends with the girl or somehow knows the girl i don't know though i'll, I'll still dig but thanks for sending that now let me go back to Paige real quick i want to read this real quick um okay Paige told me shonda's uh, Sha Paige told me she is shonda's biological oh i didn't share my there we go I'm sorry, guys. I got way off track. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, Bella. Bella Blas. Yes. I think it was just... I do think it's probably because he, he tampered with evidence. He hid stuff. He got rid of stuff. And I think he wanted to just come completely clean not because the, out of the goodness of his heart because he was trying to get a good deal so he's like who i you know this is what i'm gonna do you know I'll, i'm gonna get a deal so as much as i could say where it looks like i'm like you know telling the truth and doing the right thing and then the better deal i'll get so i think he was debating like oh should i just tell him that i hid this i moved this i did this maybe i think it was just some kind of movement of stuff getting rid of stuff is my guess um but yeah I, it's interesting though that he asked uh nolan that 
anyway um so Paige told me she and Shonda were in foster care in Alabama for about two years when they were between the ages of six and nine are those the two years her mom was in jail Ha, huh, this is going to get a whole new look now. I am glad that we're going over this. Because before, it's like we're thinking, why foster care for two years? It's got to be. Her mom went, Her mom got two years in jail or in prison uh, for, right? Can't just be a coincidence. Wow, interesting. Anyway, Paige advised during their time in foster care, Paige and Shonda were physically abused. The physical abuse consisted of starvation, given small bites of bread, sips of water or milk, placed in ice baths, and beaten with clothes hangers and or ping pong paddles. Okay, so this is when they were in foster care. Wait, is that what this is? Yeah. So this is the two years when they weren't even in their mother's care. Why did I miss that the first time? Okay. Paige advised Shauna was always favored, was always the favored sibling and could do no wrong through the eyes of the family. Paige advised Shauna is self-entitled, controlling, and possibly a sociopath. Paige advised after passing of their mother, Shauna began having a sexual relationship with her stepfather who put Shauna on birth control. So when did her mother pass? And could that be a typo and it's father wait it could be you know these documents they have so many type we've learned from going over cases typos so that's why i want to find out i cannot find if anybody could find uh i'm sure hopefully i will end up finding it but i have not been able to find mildred's uh obituary yet because i want to know when she died I don't know. I'm just thinking. So wait. It might not have been. Trammel. I'm trying to like put these dates. It might not. Have, she could have had more than. One stepfather. I'm just trying to figure out because. Cause she's saying after their mother, I'm trying, okay. Her, after her mother dies, she had, she begins to have a sexual relationship with the stepfather. Granted, if this isn't a typo and it's supposed to be father, I don't know. Um, who put Shonda on birth control. Paige advised when she was a teenager, about 16 weeks pregnant, Shonda intentionally struck Paige in the abdomen. Shonda was upset Paige was pregnant out of wedlock and pregnant before Shonda. This incident occurred in South Carolina. Paige advised she was taken to an ER in South Carolina after the incident of for abdo abdominal pain. Paige advised she miscarried the child at 23 weeks. Paige advised when she was pregnant with her second child, Shonda attempted to assault Paige, but Paige's husband intervened. Paige advised the last time she spoke to Shonda was in 2000. Paige advised she learned Shonda and Paul's arrest about a week ago. I wanted to make a comment there is one, um, and I don't know why, but only in one of the yearbooks, I think it was either one or two of the yearbook postings, they do spell Shonda with an O, but the rest is with an A. So I wonder why, maybe just people misspelling it on accident, I guess, but you would think in a yearbook she would have corrected them. I don't know. 
I forgot to point that out. One of them, either one or it might just be one time it spelled with, that they spelled it with an L. But it just made me think about this because I think it's just a typo or who knows, maybe they should, maybe her, if I could find her birth, I haven't been able to find her birth certificate yet. Maybe it was with an O and then she changed it or maybe it's just, this is a typo and so is the yearbook. But anyway, okay, so I got to find out I gotta figure out who her freaking biological dad is. This is. So crazy. So Bosch could be an option. So here's the thing. He, maybe it was Bosch that she had a sexual relationship with. Whoever her mom last got with, or I, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't Kenneth. Because maybe, because she divorced Kenneth pretty early too, and that was her second husband. She was still really young, so maybe she got married again. Maybe she got married a couple more times. Who knows? So, um, I don't know. It might not be Kenneth who she had that relationship with. We know, at least by her account, the biological father, at least she claims her biological father did it. Obiciated her. Uh, well, S ate her. Um, and then she says also her stepfather. But this, the way she words it is, wonder if Shonda was already like a teenager or something or a little bit older when she had the sexual relationship with her stepfather. What if this is on top of the other biological father and stepfather essay in her when she was younger what if this was a third one where now she thinks that's supposed to be a normal i mean she's almost normalizing it because of what she went through in her past that she actually like was like almost consenting i mean it depends on how old she was i mean it's still not consenting but like consenting in her eyes where that's what she i mean she was because she's young she's below if she's a minor she is she can't really consent but you know what i'm saying let's say she was consenting like not going against it like maybe she was i don't know i don't know how to word that because it's not like she was since you're a minor and you can't consent because you're below the age of consent you know what i'm saying but she still was doing it, you know. I don't know. I don't know. It's a mystery, all that. Um, yeah, so the things I need to find out is when her mom died. I can't, I can't find that, her obituary. Um, who Ramsey is. Who this Ramsey name comes from. And then Bosch too the Bosch is intermixed in there too so is how many stepfathers did she have and yeah there's still a lot some digging we need to find out guys um can't get him out of that what do you mean Fritz hey fam hey Jules all right, so now I want to actually read Paul's statement, that one, hold on, where um, he talks about like, liking the power. And, you know, the judge read this because the judge, the judge quoted some of uh, this, quoted a lot, quoted quite a few of these statements. Um, so he read this, obviously. Um, and he took it into account, which I'm glad, about Paul. Remember, he even quoted, like, Paul liking the power and stuff. So for him to be like, oh, it's manipulated. I didn't want to do it. Well, in your last statement, Paul, you get some kind of enjoyment out of this. So that's why psychopath, sociopath, one of the, uh, one of them is not that far. That could definitely be what he is because... He was, he was liking that 
I don't think he has empathy. I really don't. I agree with the judge. I think he lacks empathy. Um, all right, one second. I'm going, I'm going to get his one statement. Just give me one minute. I'm going to find the one. Actually, I think it's, I don't even think I need to do it that way because I think it's way down. It's going to be way down at the end of the document. Yeah, just like scrolling through this, like remembering some of this stuff, like about the scratches on his face. Uh, it's like she was trying to make reasons why she knew some of this stuff was there, right? So scratches on his face, but was guessing they were from the fall. We know there was no fall because we know he didn't even sleep on the top bunk. So that is a flat out lie because her thing is, oh, he fell off the bunk. Well, we know he wasn't sleeping on the bed. So where did he get the scratches on his face, right? Um, dang it, hold on a second. Man, I got a headache, guys. I got a headache. All right, I wanted to use my... My setting where I could... I never use it. I like it, this one because it makes it bigger. Um, okay, so... He was not sure how the... Uh, how Blank got all the bruising on his body. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, this is from Paul. This is Paul. Sorry. So Paul's the one that says he saw some scratches on his face, but was guessing they were from the fall. Hold on a second. Yeah, this one was from Paul. Okay. Seven, six. So this is the uh, summaries of statements made by Paul while at her home on seven, six. So this was right at the beginning, right? So he was supposed to be dropped off by Mama at Starbucks near his work. Shonda alerted him that Timothy wasn't breathing. They got him off the bed and attempted to resuscitate. Why? Because um, we know he wasn't on the bed. He failed because he always told Timothy he would protect him. He thought maybe Mama had fed him and Mama thought maybe he had fed him. Fed him to make him food and make sure he actually ate, ate it. I'm just kind of skipping around. So that he's the one that said he saw some scratches on his face, guessing they were from the fall. He had a bedwetting problem. Hold on, I want to... We never robbed him of food. Never. Shonda would never put her hands on him. Paul, he's got close to hitting him. So Paul's saying he's he's got close to hitting him, but walked away before doing it. My mother is amazing. Those shackles were never used for anything that wasn't necessary. He wasn't always there when the shackles were being used. Paul had been making sure he'd been eating food the last couple of weeks. He has had moments where he wanted to hurt Timothy, but his mama would calm him down. 
It says the interview ended after Shonda entered the room and spoke with him, I guess. I don't know. While speaking with Paul and Shonda in the living room of the home, I asked about the conflicting statements regarding the shackles. Shonda stated she was not aware the shackles were used on Timothy. Shonda also denied knowing anything about why the hot sauce was in the basement bathroom. This short conversation was not recorded. You guys, I read all these, not only on the live, but it broke them into pre-records, so they're on the playlist, on my video, so if you guys want to watch it. But I'm just trying to find the last statement that Paul made. This is now another statement after he was read his Miranda rights. But I still don't think this is, this is, he's still saying, oh, yeah, we fed him, we. Oh, yeah, here, this is the one, never mind. Okay, here we go. Hold on, I just want to make sure that this is the exact one. That... Yeah, this is the one I wanted to read. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just remind you, because I know most of you guys probably already read it with me the first time, but we're, let's uh, remind ourselves now that we uh, know more stuff. Okay. And this would have been July four on July fourteenth, twenty twenty two. I stood before Magistrate Wawaria and swore to the felony warrant for first degree CA charges against Paul. So Do Detective Swanker and I, along with the NSPD Road Patrol, arrived at it would be Paul and Shonda's house and executed this arrest warrant. Paul Ferguson was arrested and transported NSA NSPD. And was seated in the interview room. And so they removed his handcuffs. I advised he was not free. I advised Paul he was not free to leave and advised him of his Miranda rights. Paul advised he understood his rights and agreed to speak with us. Okay, so Paul provided the following statements. He knew he was in trouble when he was arrested. He felt guilty for not stopping things from happening. He felt guilty not having a real conversation with Timothy. He stated while his mother, Shonda, was not home, Paul was in charge of keeping an eye on him in case he misbehaved. He would, Paul stated he, Timothy would misbehave by stealing food, but now thinks he was actually hungry. Timothy would have to go to his room with food and his iPad until Mama got home. Timothy would have to go up on his bed, but this was before he was moved into the closet downstairs. Paul was not sure if Tim was moved to the closet due to the punishment or due to a broken bed frame. Paul stated Timothy slept in the closet downstairs on a tarp that was purchased off Amazon. Paul stated Timothy was fed bread and bread with hot sauce. Paul stated he was also fed rice with hot sauce. Paul stated he did not like the hot sauce. So when I say he, I'm talking about Timothy. Paul stated the hot sauce was for punishment. Paul was not sure why Timothy was punished, but he thought it was because he would sneak food. Paul stated Timothy would be punished for claiming to need support for standing or for leaning on stuff. Paul stated he noticed how thin Timothy was becoming and suggested they give him food. Paul stated at one point Timothy became unresponsive, but he was able to get him to respond. So another time he becomes unresponsive. Paul said he cooked Timothy eggs with cheese and toast. Paul said he did not tell Shonda he made the eggs. Paul said he was told not to give Timothy food with asking, without asking. Paul stated there were no cameras upstairs or outside. Paul stated Shonda did not restrict his food consumption. Or, I'm sure Gabe's is what that says. Paul stated he would tell Shonda if Timothy misbehaved to get him in trouble. Paul stated surveillance cameras were in the basement to monitor and watch Timothy. Paul stated he and Shonda had access to watch the surveillance via apps on their cell phone. Paul was, or Timothy was homeschooled in Michigan. Timothy, or sorry, Paul stated Timothy was unresponsive the day before he passed away. Oh, he had to pick Timothy up the day before he passed away. 
Shauna told him Timothy was just acting. He put Timothy in an ice bath sometime after four, despite questioning if it was the right thing to do. Stated he made sure the cold water was as cold as it could get. Ice baths were a form of punishment. He and Timothy did not, or he and Gabe did not receive the same punishments as Timothy. Paul never questioned Timothy's punishments. Paul admitted to coming up with forms of punishments. Paul would punish Timothy without Shonda's instruction. Paul would watch Timothy do wall sits for an extended period of time to ensure he did them right. Paul would make Timothy run up and down the stairs off the back patio for punishment at Shonda's request. Timothy would have to do 20 to 10 to 20 sets of stairs. And remember, he has that move. He's like impaired, physically impaired in some ways. At least that's what they said. So to have him do this stuff. If Timothy was actually, or if Timothy was caught on camera eating anything, he would be punished and Paul would enforce the punishment. There were times Timothy was not allowed to sleep. Timothy did not eat, get to eat like Paul and Gabe. Shonda would make Timothy throw up if he snuck food. Paul was told to make Timothy throw up. Paul would tell Timothy to fake making himself throw up because Paul could not make him do it. Paul felt Timothy did not always need the food he snuck. Paul states he knows he should have stopped it. Paul stated he knows he is guilty. Paul stated he deserves every punishment that comes his way. He would get angry at Timothy and at times did not want Timothy to be there. He never wanted he never wanted Timothy truly, truly gone. He thinks it was a couple days before Timothy died when Timothy was still functional and going up the stairs but still needed support. That Shonda said, I'm so tempted to just leave him on the side of the road, Paul said. Yeah, same here. So Paul said, yeah, same here. Timothy was punished for acting like he needed support to move or stand. Paul would administer California Reaper or Scorpion Pepper hot sauce into Timothy's mouth for punishment. Timothy would have to swallow the hot sauces. Timothy did not like the hot sauce. The toilet was out of range of the camera. Paul would put a to toothbrush in Timothy's mouth to assist with self-induced vomiting. Paul told Timothy to fake vomit. Paul made Timothy do stares even though Shauna could not even see it on camera. Punishments would change if one form of punishment was not effective. Stare and wall sit punishment stopped when Paul or when Timothy became too thin. Sometimes Timothy was given peanut butter sandwiches and Raymond. I doubt that. Paul did not know what Timothy's bad behavior was. Timothy would whine when he had to do stares. Timothy eventually stopped complaining. Timothy's wrists would be zip tied behind his head. Timothy's ank ankles were zip tied together. Timothy would have to stand facing the wall with his hands behind his head for prolonged periods of time. Paul did what he told what he was told. Paul said it did not seem weird to him to punish Timothy or to pro deprive him of food. Timothy was not allowed to use electronic devices or look at someone else's device. Timothy was punished if he looked at someone else's device. Paul stated Timothy could be destructive. Motion sensors and alarms were implemented to keep Timothy confined in the closet. Paul stated he does not think Timothy likes sleeping in the closet. He did what he, Paul said he did what he was told. He would make Timothy stand against the wall if he got mad at him. Or if he got mad at Gabe, I think maybe. Or wait, he would make Timothy stand against the wall if he got mad at Timothy? I don't know. Paul did not trust Timothy to behave. Timothy would have to stand against the wall with his hands behind his head for several hours. Paul would set timers while Timothy would stand against back door upstairs where he where there were no cameras. Paul liked getting praised by Shonda. Paul admitted like he liked having power over Timothy. Paul admitted he liked having control over Timothy. Paul admitted having power over somebody feels good. Paul admitted he was physically forceful with Timothy. If Timothy stole food, he would have to go without food for additional days. He was already freaking going without food. What the heck? What do you mean? Paul admitted he could have given Timothy food. Paul admitted he willingly punished and starved Timothy. Paul admitted he was Timothy was trying to keep himself alive by sneaking food. Paul and Shauna denied him that. Paul was not sure how many ice baths Timothy was forced to take. 
Paul stated he th often thought Timothy was fake and needing support. Um, Paul stated Timothy was forced to take ice baths the night before he died. He had to undress. So Paul had to undress Timothy and place him in the ice bath. Paul stated he would smack Timothy with an open hand on his head, shoulders, back, or when he was angry at Timothy for not listening. <sighs> Timothy was allowed only a sip of water. Paul stated he never goes a day without food or beverage. Paul thinks Timothy was starved because he would take food. Paul admitted he would push Timothy. Paul admitted that when Timothy was getting very thin, Paul would still physically assault Timothy. Paul stated he dropped Timothy the morning before Timothy was unresponsive, trying to move him from the closet. <sighs> Paul stated, I'm basically his murderer as well. Paul stated, I did not stop it, and I could have. Paul stated he could have stopped it, but he didn't. Paul stated he may be the cause of Timothy's starvation, but wasn't sure. Paul stated, if I did, just throw me in prison for the rest of my life. <sighs> Paul stated, if I was a part of it, I deserve it. Paul stated he used whatever ice was in the ice maker to add to Timothy's ice baths. Paul stated he could not have sat in the ice baths. Paul stated he Timothy would have to sit in ice, ice baths naked. Timothy did not like the ice baths. The day before Timothy died, Timothy was not functional. Paul stated he had to take Timothy's clothes off while he was lying on the floor. Paul stated he had to pick Timothy up and place him in the ice bath. The first ice bath was about 30 minutes long. Timothy was in an ice bath the day before he died from around 4 to 11. That's seven hours. Paul stated Shonda dragged Timothy from the ice bath to the closet. Shonda found Timothy deceased in the closet. Shonda called out for Paul and told him he wasn't breathing. Shonda pulled him out of the closet, demonstrated how he did 30 chest compressions. He administered rescue breaths. He could smell vomit on his breath. Is not sure if Shonda administered chest compressions. He, ex he accepts responsibility for what happened. He was a willing participant in implementing punishment. Paul admitted to feeling powerful over implementing punishment. Paul stated he hates himself. I asked Paul what he thought an appropriate punishment would be for him. He stated he did not know. Timothy, Paul stated Timothy would tell him he couldn't do certain punishments anymore because he needed support. Paul stated he could have done something, but he didn't. He was afraid she would yell at him. Adam would not have let punishments happen. To Timothy, power got to my head. He wanted uh, Shonda proud of him. Um, so yeah, he went and Shonda proud of him. He asked if he was going to prison. I advised Paul he would be going to jail and there was process within the courts. Paul asked if there was any way to testify to make sure Mama is put in prison for this. Paul stated he doesn't care how long he has to go to jail as long as she doesn't hurt anyone else. He thought he felt powerful but was powerless. He was drunk with power. Grammy probably wasn't allowed to come inside the house because it was dirty or to prevent her from seeing Timothy. When his brother was a minor, when his brother Blank was a minor, he sexually, he essayed his sister. When he was living in Oklahoma in an elementary school, he faked, admitted to essaying a female student. I don't, I don't know. That's like what you have fake admitted to essaying a female student. What? He was unaware of any essay abuse or at, yeah, essay involving Shonda. He's unaware of any essay involving Shonda. Uh, he never essayed Timothy. 
So I wonder, this is, this would be interesting. Did he just come out and say that? Or did they ask him? You know what I'm saying? Did they say, hey, like maybe they saw, um, well, all the statements, the people making statements um, about what happened. And, and it could be also in like court records or whatever about the essay, uh, him, him essaying Timothy. So I just wonder, did they bring it up and ask him or did he just give that information? Because if he just like said that, like he just said, why well, never essay Timothy? That would be kind of telling because why would you even bring that up? Or did they just ask him? I'm guessing they probably asked him, but Paul stated blank had a kidney stone when they were younger. I don't know if that's G or Tim. I think it looks like it's Timothy. I'm guessing. Oh. Paul stated Shonda asked Paul to delete the text conversations between the two of them, as well as any photographs of Timothy. Uh, Paul stated Shonda told him to delete his search history on Google. What was his search history? Paul stated his search history was on Safari. Paul stated Shonda told Paul to lie about finding Timothy dead on his bed before first responders arrived. Paul stated he doesn't think it's true that Timothy did not have feeling of his tongue. Shonda and Paul told, or Shonda told Paul to put pants in a belt on Timothy before first responders arrived, which we heard that, that happened. We heard her tell him that. Paul stated there were times she only had him wearing a diaper. Paul stated Shonda did not want Timothy to have sheets or blanket. Paul stated that Timothy may have been wrapped in a shower curtain when he was found dead. Wow. Paul was transported to Muskegon County Jail. Anyway, I just wanted to read that reminding like how it seemed like, you know, you like the power and that is some of the stuff that the judge was a quote and it's crazy man i have this worst headache that's why i keep drinking water because i feel like i might be dehydrated i haven't been drinking enough water so but anyway yeah so like i said i'm gonna i'll probably i'll have a call i'm probably i have a, a doctor's appointment at eight in the morning so i don't I'll have a call for sure by tomorrow, Al, okay? Um, and then I have something else coming in, like I said. So by the end of the week, I should have it. That We'll probably have a few videos to do on that. And then um, I'm going to try to figure these, these unknowns out, like Shonda's dad. What was the things? I better write them down. Why? No, I know what I need. I know what I'm missing in my research. So I'm going to try to get those answers. Jojo, like, is is Jojo Jody, which I don't know. It could be. We know who Randall is now, so that's good. Um, Yeah. All right, guys. And I still, here's the thing. The reason, so those phone calls that I have, I haven't listened to them all. So the, it might, we might get answers, guys. So, I'm anxious to listen to more. I haven't had time. Like I said, I was out of town, and then now I've been researching her family, so I haven't got to listen to any. I usually, as I am editing them, to see if there's any parts where I need to add subtitles if it's really bad, that's when I listen to it. Um, but... But, yeah, what do you guys think? I don't know. Um, like I said, it, it was that there were some like victims. Uh, what did he call it? If, the prosecutor talks about it. It was like five thousand dollars. They're the ones that paid for his burial and stuff. But I don't know where he's buried. But Shonda has to the restitution. She has to pay that back. She was so mad. I, um, it's so awesome. I mean, she, they're going to appeal it because you heard her tell the lawyer, well, we got to appeal that. So they're going to try to appeal it, but there's no way they're going to win. Of course, I, I don't think, she, I think she's going to have to pay it. I don't think, because the judge said, well, you could appeal it, but, and she's like, you could tell, she said something like, yeah, to tell the judge or tell the lawyer she wanted to, but I don't, I think she'll still have to pay it. Um, But she's so mad. Judge O'Reilly Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me check my email.
Okay, hold on one second, guys. Let me uh, save these. Er, why does it not let me download those? Hold on. I'm trying to download, Jenny, the ones you sent me. I could share them, right? Oh, okay. So it's that, that lady is, okay, so the lady is definitely not, uh, his wife. That's not her sitting next to him. So there's, that's Randall. And nobody go harass it. You know what I'm saying? Don't leave him alone. He didn't do anything. Just because, you know, other, some people see things different. It doesn't mean that you should go attack these people. He's just, he sees it different and he wants to help them. You know what I'm saying? He's not, he's not, he's not the bad guy. You know, we don't know anything about him and I'm not, the only reason I'm looking into him is because we're trying to figure out when we're listening to Paul who he's talking to so we understand. So I don't have anything against this guy. He was just trying to help him out because he sees it different than we, than I see it. Some people do see it like, you know, the way he sees it. It doesn't make anybody a bad guy. But, so yeah, so that helps us at least to figure out um, that, and I know most of you in here, you're not the ones that do, but there are going to be some, you know, some of the people watching that could be people that might, and I just, I urge you not, not to bother them. Okay, so, because I mean, what is it, does it, what, what is the point? It's just, yeah. All right, so hold on, Jenny. Let me see what you sent me. Okay, so that that makes sense. So you're saying that you? Oh, yeah. Then that makes sense. Did I not say it? I said it sounds like it seems like it's the girl that maybe the girl could be related to Jody or something because all her pictures have the girl in it and not the Ryan. So. It looks like I'm talking about Jody, the friend of um, Paul's Jody that pe that could be Jojo because they call her Jojo. We're not sure yet. And remember that girl that looks like this. It was the same girl. And I was like, well, why does she have pictures of him? But not her. Not him. She had, oh, my God. I can't even talk my head. She has pictures of her, but not him. Because. Jeannie looked it up, so it looks like she's related to the girl, not him. So, um, right? Is that what you're... Let me make sure I read that right. Engaged. Yeah, because they have the same last name, at least. The girl. That girl has the same last name as Jody. so she's related to her somehow. So, you guys didn't get it. Okay, when she was talking about her son, Ryan, because you guys didn't get it that that could be her son-in-law, right? Because what if this is her daughter and Ryan is just her son-in-law? Would it? Cause she, I mean, she could have been calling her Ryan her son if it was her son-in-law. But the way she said it, it seemed like it was her son. Because, you know, she, you think she would have said her daughter's name then if it was her daughter. So I got it more like that seemed like it was her son. So then, I don't know. And then she, Jenny did this side by side. Thank you. Actually, I want to get the screenshot where we have a little bit clearer picture. But what do you, I don't know. What do you guys think? Oh, man, I got a headache. I wish I would have, if I could find the screenshot, I guess I could find um, and do another screenshot. But remember I had that really good, it looked like a pretty clear screenshot. I just don't know where it saved. I'm so annoyed that. Oh. 
pages. God. Hold on, guys. Give me one second. I am going to just get one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Turn. I'm getting a good, I'm going to get a, a, a good screenshot of that. Cause I think that one I had was pretty clear. We might be able to tell if it's her, you know, I'm going to get a new one here. Is it right here? I don't know if it's this one. They do it a couple times. No, that's not Jody Dupont. But that doesn't mean we don't know that this for sure is Jojo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We don't know if this is her. We're just guessing. Maybe she didn't make it to the sentence in hearing. You know, she might not have made it. We don't know for sure. Uh, maybe this is uh, his mom this guy's mom maybe this is his grandma i mean we don't know uh, we're just guessing it's jojo but if it is it doesn't look like that jody dupont to me unless if that jody dupont aged i don't think it's her to you guys i don't think so no she said she was coming from the last the the phone calls that we heard, she said she was coming. I didn't hear her say she wasn't. Did you guys? I only heard that I heard her say she was. As if I missed something. She was talking about making a sign for Randy Randall and she was. Yeah, I don't think that that's. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, I guess it. Why is it not my thing not coming up? It shows I. I hope it's screenshot. And usually, I get a little thing that tells me. All right, guys, I got a freaking my green. I wanted to chat with you guys a little bit, though. Yeah, it did. Okay, hold on. Here. I don't know how zooming in is really gonna... Oh. It's not going in order. Hold on. Oh my God. I mean, it's definitely Randall, but I don't know. Do you guys think that it is? 
that it's the do you think that that looks like that jody on in facebook though i don't think it looks like her to me yeah go ahead uh email me see if you find anything email me because i'm i'll probably have to go to bed soon since i have that doctor's appointment but uh oh yeah and it didn't sound like her i keep forgetting we had that video of her behind it that did to me it did not sound like her but she was talking like in a baby voice like talking to her grandson so she was altering her voice you know how you do when you're talking to like your a little kid so that throws it off a little bit but no i didn't see your email oh wait hold on yeah, I did. I didn't think that looked like her, though. And where do you see? I want to find an affidavit. Hold on a second. See, I don't think that picture, the person that, uh, who just said that about the email, Nicole. Uh, Nicole? Yeah, I got your email. That girl looks way younger, though. Is that an old picture of her? I did see it, but it, to me, this that girl in that picture looks so much younger. Like, even way younger than... Well, let me see here. Let me see where... I'm going to bring up the affidavit. I want to see where they mention her. Hold on one second, guys. I might just have to end it, though, because we could just keep going on and, like, it's it's really never ending until we get an answer. So I got to end it somehow right now because, um, no, that's a doctor, Nicole. That was the doctor. That was the doctor that prepared the report. That's definitely not somebody that's, that would be so unprofessional. She's not the person that's calling him. She did the, um post-mortem exam report right yeah we prefer to advise the following yeah look which i the i actually wanted to do a video i never did get to read i read the whole thing on a lie but the these little bits and pieces of like uh little things i was going to do because i don't have it on a pre-record i never did get to it so i might actually do a pre-record on it but um no somebody emailed me was uh talking about that th they mentioned a uh, joyce i was just, that's what i was talking about no she did the report nicole that's not who he's talking to <laughs> but thanks yeah i mean but yeah we'll do i'll read that some other time i can't right now I wanted to chat with you guys too. I didn't even get to chat with you. Um, all oh, thanks, Vanessa. See how many people complain. Hey, I did I did do a freaking PowerPoint at the beginning, so hopefully they don't complain that they could just look through that for quick quick facts and everybody else that likes the interaction, likes to hang out, you guys can stay. And I'm glad you do. Thank you. Um aww. Wait, I just watch out and don't social. It's not. We just want to kind of get a context. It's just we're listening to the phone calls. It's. I think it's a true crime, like just like a sleuth type true crime. When when we true crimers like get really interested in a case, like we want to know every detail. So like we're we're very invested in this case, and this is a person that is talking on these phone calls and we don't know who she is so it's just another little piece of the puzzle that when we're listening to this we have a context of who he's talking to and you know what i'm saying it's just i think it's uh, has to do with the type of people that um are interested in true crime or very detail oriented we want to know like every detail not I, i'm not going to say every single person that's interested in true crime but a lot of like die hard people that like are very like love the deep dives and want to just like know every detail i would say m m more than not they're very passionate true crimers that are like not just ones that just kind of like watch this 
at the surface level, but really diehard true crime that really just like are huge. I don't even know what the word fanat not fanatics, but like I don't know. We just like to know every detail. So yes, we want to know who this is. It's just something that we know. I don't. We just have to know. Um, <laughs> curing me. <laughs> um, if you know, you just know, and if not, it's fine. I mean, there's it's not nothing wrong with other people that don't, but there's a lot of us that do, and you'll find a lot of those type of people in this community. Is my, my point I'm making. Um, yeah, because he's, they're not, I told, I, hey, I, I know I'm trying to, t I told people, hey, just leave them alone. I don't think, uh, I, the, the people that watch me, I don't, I feel like aren't like that, but of course you'll have a random troll watching and, I feel like, I mean, you just can't stop. And people are just, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I don't even know. I can't talk right now. I have a headache and I am just not making sense. But no, I would hope not. Go and hurt those hurt. And I don't think, no, I think, here's the thing, criminal. I think the most that these trolls do is they're just behind their freaking keyboards. You know, I don't think anybody goes and do, actually does anything, but um that's why i was just like urging hey nobody bother them it's just it's why you know but the most i think they do is just they're just like the stupid oh they could have this courage behind a keyboard and type up anything and i gotta remember that i let it get to me when these people are insulting me behind a keyboard i need to just remember who cares i'm up here showing my face i'm doing my thing they're behind the keyboard acting like jerks to my face they probably wouldn't do it you know to my face they i would i don't even know who they are behind the keyboard it's just like some made up name which is fine i'm not saying i suggest you put your real name but my point is is when they're behind a fake name they feel like they could just do whatever type whatever but it's just the our the internet and how people are i just hate I mean, I, I guess you get the positives with the negatives, you know. Oh, thanks, Tara. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Kimberly. Creamy, I probably didn't. I'm sorry if I didn't explain it right. I feel like I'm like talking gibberish right now real bad because this headache but um and just from staring at the screen for two days too researching but uh I feel like we got a good group though that is just in it because they love true crime and they're not trying to be like troublemakers you know they're just we just want to know just to know for you know for our own knowledge thank you lori yeah yeah haha ha. we'll go back at the beginning when i was actually made you a freaking powerpoint <laughs> come on you're just saying that because i i'm the one that puts down myself and then people go on that and they use that it's like i get more people coming at me with the same things when i say it it's like they do it on purpose because i say something like oh i'm all over my head hurts and then people use that to attack me because they're like oh this is how we'll attack her we'll rewind at the beginning i made you a nice powerpoint with 15 slides it lays out everything i just i'm not in the mood for this crap um I'm sorry. I mean, I just, I can't do it right now. I got so much freaking hate in my last one. I just can't. It's like, you don't have to announce, people don't have to announce when they leave. Okay. Just go. Like the fact that people are announcing it, it's like, you're purposely trying to hurt me like you want to be mean why 
do you know how many YouTube channels I watch and I'll click on it like, nope, not for me. I move on. I don't sit there and say, you know what? You suck. You're so unorganized. You ramble on too much. I just say, nope, that's not my style. This is not, I want to go move on. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just don't understand. I mean, I don't mean to be mean, Catalina, but I, you don't understand my last video. I got so much crap that... So what did I do? I made a, a nice PowerPoint that you could go at the beginning. I took the time for these people that would need or some kind of presentation. I sat there and made your presentation at the beginning with the family. Go do that, okay? It's like I can't even... This is a live stream. We're just... We... I like to interact with people. I know, Tara. I'm just like in a bad mood because I got a headache. <laughs> and I just feel, and here's the thing. I feel like that anybody that says anything right now is doing it on purpose now because they see that I'm starting to like have like an insecurity and I'm saying things. So that's when I know the, the people that are doing it now, like at certain times when I say something and then they do it, that's when I know it's not constructive criticism. It's Ha ha, they saw a way. Ooh, she has an insecurity about this. This is where I'm going to attack her. And that's, I don't know. I just look at it like that when people attack me when I'm already attacking myself. <laughs> I don't know. That's how I, I'm uh, looking at it. Or that's how I view it when people do it when I'm, when I bring it up. Anyway. Oh, thank you, damn it. I know. Thank you, Karen. I know I am. But usually my wind down, I like to chat with everybody. So anybody here <laughs> right now, the, the, the live is basically over, guys. Now this is the time. Well, I'm just talking to my audience. So don't expect rewind it if you want information now i'm just gonna talk to uh, my 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 friends here okay so if you're here for the information now then shut off because it's over <laughs> now we're just talking okay anyway hey leanne i'm in australia and i'm glad to have you live yay what see wow i can't with people i'm so sorry it's just See, like a lot of times, here's the thing. You know, a lot of times you could be, you know, you could ignore it, but you'll have like those moments if you're tired or a headache or you're just having a bad day where you let those little things get to you, you know, and that's, <laughs> you just, Ugh. um, oh, thanks, Marcy. I'm not nice to people that intrude on my space really, she yeah. <laughs> And it sucks because Catalina, her message really wasn't that mean. So I could have, I probably did overreact, but it's just like, it's, it's built up off of last live's comments were like, oh Lord, it really got me down. It like really got me like, uh, like, re I, you know, I was like, oh man, I should have just not did a live that day. I knew I should have waited. I, I don't know. I was just doubting myself. I was. It sucks. And so, um, Catalina, I'm sorry if I overreacted, but where are you at? Let's see. Hopefully they did just rewind. I said rewind if you, you know, if you want the information, rewind. Oh, thanks, Louise. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Tennyson. Yes. Just the last live. Just the last live I did. Got so many, you know, unorganized. You ramble too much. But I mean, a lot of, a lot of people will say like, oh, you ramble. Or like, I'm not here for you. I'm just here for the information. Or um, I want to, you know, it's good information. But you, so, I mean, I, I guess that some of them might have been trying to give me constructive criticism. But. 
it's a live stream you know what i'm saying and like a lot of people get mad when i interact with people like we don't why are you doing this like well when i'm live see you're watching afterwards the live stream is mainly for the people during the live stream that's where like people love that when they're live and they get to interact with you so this isn't a pre-record i try to keep up with the pre-records but sometimes i mean i pre-records take a while to edit so i try to give them at least some pre-records but i wasn't able to do it right now i have too much other things to do i would have loved to make a pre-record on shonda's family history but that'll take me forever the way i do them so i i don't know if i'll be able to because i got too much other stuff i have to do so i don't know yeah it was after it was in the comments yeah no i will I'll, I'll always do my lives too definitely i'm not gonna quit my lives and i need to stop you know letting those comments bother me because some people just don't like lives i have a lot of people that like them i need to focus on the people that like them i know i know it's just sometimes when you're you have those moments when there's so many you know it was like i was like oh everyone i was clicking on was like negative so it was just like oh my lord so when i do come to a positive one i'm like appreciate it so much because there are positive ones too you know yeah i know i know and then there's like and then some people are like i love it how they'll try to they tell you what they want it's like well we want it like this like well wait a minute just because you want it that means i have to cater to just you like what do you mean there's a lot of people that want lives too so <laughs> uh. we did look kim we did what do you mean we we spent we looked through their stuff what i'm confused what you're saying we looked through it I mean, we're st that's up in the air. We're still trying to figure out if that's JoJo, but I don't understand what you're saying. Well, I already looked. Can you explain what you mean, Kim? And Jeannie even did a nice side-by-side -side of uh, her to see if we think it looks like her. I'm not sure yet. Like I said, I'm still up in the air. I don't know. I still need to do a little bit of research. Mm. oh yeah genie that those are pictures yeah we went through that oh you said you came late though yeah we went through the those pictures what well, Am I missing something? Because we we looked at those. What am I missing here? Because we were trying to figure out if it was the same girl. And I think we uh, it is because, well, number one, they have the same last name. Number two, uh, Gaming and Sleuthing pointed out where they both posted like almost identical picture of on Ryan's and then on uh, Jody's. So, yeah, I'm confused. But the the new email was pictures of them though. That new email you sent was Jody. Um, what am I missing? Hold on. I don't know, maybe. Hold on, let me show you what I'm talking about. This is what I got from you. I'll show you because maybe i'm missing something you got to tell me what you're what i'm missing here because i'm too i'm too tired to catch what you're <laughs> what it is okay here's the two this is the two pictures that you just sent me okay but we i mean i i those were on jody's account because we already went through those what am i missing though and now we did realize that that was the guy that was the girl that was with ryan but what what else am i supposed to look at it and I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm really wondering because I don't know what you're saying with them. What is it? Let's see. 
Oh, it's okay, Kim. I'm sorry if I'm like snapping. I don't, if it seems like I'm like being mean or whatever. I just have a headache and I'm just, I feel like it's coming across. My tone's coming across weird. Oh, okay, Jeannie. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I thought, I was figuring you probably missed it. Yeah, we'd look through it. I'm still, why do you think it's her, Jeannie? Do you think it's JoJo? I'm like 50 50. I don't know. If it's JoJo. Yep, they have the same last name. Gaming and Sleuthing show pointed that out. So yeah. I kept looking at the other pick in that and I sent in that email. She looks older. Hold on, let me see what you're talking about. Let me. So do you I don't know. So do you think it is her? Oh, from 2019? So that means that was five years old. Does that mean she's even older? I mean, maybe. Maybe. I said, I'll try to look into it, but I think next I'm going to just work on a phone, getting a phone call out, and then I think I'm going to go down the Bosch rabbit hole, look, try to look more into Bosch, because I spent a lot of time go looking into Ramsey, and I could not freaking find somebody that could be Shonda's dad. So... I did look at Bosch a little bit, but not as much as, like, I did the Rams that you saw. I'm going to try to look more into that and see what I could find. Oh, my legs. All right, guys. I am going to go, I think. I feel like I didn't get to hang out with you guys that much, though. Like, I didn't get to chat with Chad as much as I would have liked to. Because I was busy showing other stuff. Oh, Renee. Oh, Jeannie, thank you. That's awesome. Oh, I'm like going backwards. Jay Brown, thank you. Satan is showing his dad. <laughs> yeah, that's true, huh? Wait, when he seen what, Jennifer? My Slay so Couch just actually left when he seen that. Seen what? Oh, that? Yeah, I definitely, because I was in Columbus, and then the go, on the trip to Columbus, I was going, like, I only had, like, a couple hours of sleep going to the party, and I was like, oh my god, I'm so tired. But, yeah. So tomorrow I gotta get up early, so I'm right now only gonna get a few hours tonight. But I promise, oh, I don't want to promise, hold on, I don't want to promise something that I can't for sure promise, but I am going to try to get a jail call out by tomorrow. I think I should be able to do that, because I'm not doing, I'm just going to do subtitles for hard to hear parts, you know, so yeah, I should be able to do that, guys. Sorry, because I know it's been a couple days, and I want to listen to a couple, you know, I haven't heard them all, so I'm anxious to listen to more, too. Um, so I think I, I think I did everything that I wanted to cover. I hope, watch I end this and I'm like, I forgot this. I forgot that. I think I got everything though. I do. We got freaking Shonda's sister figured out now and, um, her stepdad, their correct stepdad now. So who is that other, that other Kenneth Lee Tree? Who the heck? I don't know who he is, but he's not the right guy. And that that's all over Reddit. Like Reddit, that's who Reddit's saying is her stepdad. And hey, I almost, I mean, I thought it was him. I, I did say I can't confirm it, but Reddit, I feel like was influencing me thinking it was him. 
because I mean that's what they're saying. I mean everybody in Reddit is like this is stepdad, this is stepdad. I had people emailing me, this is her stepdad. He looks just like her, even though it would be a stepdad, which I don't. I think people were doubting. Well, maybe it's a real dad, and so it had me like kind of like influenced to like, is it? And I even pointed out like some dates to uh, one of the person um, that I'm talking through email. I'm like, but this date doesn't seem to match up. Like these dates. It's just something where I was like, I don't know. But then, like, everybody in Reddit was saying that. I'm like, oh, I don't think that's him. But then I was like, eh. <laughs> but no. It's Kenneth E. Yeah, rewind it. Because I did, I feel like the beginning was more organized. I just kind of slowly fell off as my head started hurting. Um... I think I it's Adam. I know. Here's the thing. I know everybody's quoting because I did too. I pointed it out during Paul's testimony where he asks, "Oh, is G or is Adam G's dad?" And he says, "No." But I think Paul misunderstood him. I do think that Adam is G's dad. I really do. I think Paul misunderstood and 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 just got it confused and answered it wrong. In my opinion, I think the chances are him mixing it up rather than it not being his dad. That's just my opinion. I mean, people could disagree, but. Um, oh, I see. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, I know, Lori. I know. I wish I wouldn't have. All right, guys. So. Oh, yeah, and I have something coming in. And by the end of this week, I should be having another interesting thing coming. Dang, I got to find somebody um, to help me uh, read something. I got to figure that out. So that I'll probably have a couple lives coming in this weekend. I know I gotta figure out how to do that. I might need to. Who's a good reader? I don't know yet. I have a couple options, but I might need I might need somebody to help me read something. I don't know. If I do, I'll do a community post. Is anybody like a really good reader? <laughs> I mean, like that reads out loud good. All right, I'm going to go. Bye, guys. Thank you for hanging out. For almost four hours. Oh, my Lord. Oh, Bosch is in. If you do, ba like, background searches on him, Bosch is all over in the family. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? You saw it somewhere? If you could remember, if, if there's somewhere else that you saw it, let me know. But that was one of the names that was in my top of my, on my list. I shouldn't say top of my list. That was one of the names. It was on my list of looking into because it's there's a lot of people that are linked as relatives with that last name that link with the Trammels and the um Ramsey's uh her, her mom her uh just the fam the first side of the family yeah so all right bye guys.